Oh, let's click live. I said a tick right. talk, oh. a ticky, oh. a ticky, ticky, tick, tick, talk. You don't stop. Hey. Yes. Hey, what's up? We you heard about. I'm talking to you. What's up, man? Oh yeah, uh, good, good. How are you? Hey, have you heard of this Bill Maher guy? Yeah, what a loot. Uh... <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I always liked uh, something about the guy. Um, because he was always throughout the years. I remember when I was just getting into this online criticism of Islam sphere and even the whole atheist square sphere. He was uh, he has wait wait always... wait wait those are those are two different shapes. Which one? Pick one. Sphere Both. or square? Okay, all right. Both. Both. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> he was from the very beginning, even years ago. Despite all of the criticism, despite all of the liberal progressive, oh, let's be careful about Islam. Let's be careful. Let's not offend anybody. He was always like, hey, you know, I, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. It's, it's garbage. It's terrible. And I'm going to talk about it. And he hasn't changed in that way. And <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy to mm -hmm. see that. Yeah. And that's cool because that goes back. I mean, it was all the way. It was back in the 90s. I didn't watch it, but he had uh, his show Politically Incorrect. Uh -huh. And he would just cover all the stuff that is actually politically incorrect. So, um, yeah, he was he's always he's always been w ready to uh, share controversial uh, views and go against um, go against the grain. It's got to be a rough spot because, I mean, you know, liberals have always been his main target audience and, you know, going against this, <laughs> which he's always pointed out, like, how insane is it that we, we defend this? Like, how, how are we nuts? Like, what is that? Um, so yeah, he's, but he's always been willing to, uh, to point that out, but it's weird because sometimes I'll listen to him and I'll think this guy's a freaking dope. He'll be talking about something. It'll be like the dumbest thing I've, I've ever heard. Get him talking about, get him talking. I mean, like he sounds like a Jesus mither, like the entire thing is all just made up, um, <laughs> sometimes, which I mean, and he'll, he'll go with like the pagan, the pagan myth theory that they're, that, that that the early Christians are like, Ooh, let's copy, let's copy Mithras and, and we'll copy all these pagan gods, which no one holds anymore. That's like from the position from like the seventies. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he'll, he'll still cling to that sort of thing and be talking to people who don't know any better. And so he, he just rolls with it and so on. But it, it's weird because when it comes to Islam, he's like the most commonsensical person um, out there. And it's just, and I've seen him over and over and over again when people try to uh, try to whitewash the situation or say, you know, say, ah, but everyone has their radicals. You know, not, not, not like this, not like this, guys. And he just breaks it down yeah. and so on. So, and he he always sounds like he, I've seen him on other people's news programs when they're interviewing him on this stuff. And he just he goes into like like he's the teacher and they're the student mode and they don't and it's it's just amazing because they don't know how to defend any of the little things they're trained to say and he just ends up ripping them apart. Anyway. He also does this thing which I love very much. Like e even among a lot of these uh, you know atheist people, you get this thing a lot. Like when when Islam is criticized, uh, uh, they will say and yeah, also uh, also other religions and all religions and this and that. Um, and he specifically refuses to do that. And he also calls it out. Like uh, there were several occasions where when he said something about Islam and Muslim beliefs and then um, a guest or a host when he was somewhere else said, OK, but isn't that true for all religions? And he's like, no, no, it's not. It's not. Mm -hmm. This is about Islam. It's only Islam that is like this. It's only Islam that is violent in such a way and so on. So he, he um, I don't know, I just love that despite a lot of uh, hate and criticism that he got from the left for that stance. Uh, and th so many times they were like, why are, why is he still around? Why don't we cancel him? He's Islamophobic and all of that. He's like, I don't, I don't care about you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's a pretty cool, pretty cool guy. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the, the plan for this show is we're going to go through his recent, um, his recent little monologue from real time with Bill Maher. I'm actually, I actually want to like move on to a bunch of other topics other than because we've, we've covered, we've been covering the, uh, the uh, Israeli Hamas uh, conflict for quite some time, but his, his, his monologue was so awesome that we definitely had to, we definitely have to go through this. Um, yeah. And we are, I was thinking, 
uh, right before the show, I was thinking, ah, so this is HBO and they are very, very strict about flagging stuff. And then I was about to go on AP said, hey, you might want to pause that even more than usual because uh, it's because of the, fl the flagging and so on, because HBO will actually take down your video while you're live <laughs> yeah. and so on if you play too much of it. So we'll probably like pause it after each of his uh, points or jokes or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yes. well, what's also important is uh, going through this video, the video is not just about um, Israel, Palestine, he also addresses directly Islam and mm -hmm. Islamic expansion com compared to uh, Christianity, for example. So mm -hmm. this brings us back to a very important topic. Yeah, he makes a lot of good points and his uh, for for this clip, he kind of reminds me of like Douglas Murray and that, uh, you know, they, they they speak differently. They're using a different uh, style and so on. But Douglas Murray will speak for five minutes and I will just be thinking, wow, that is like the best points you could have emphasized in those five minutes. He somehow zeroes in on like the the uh, the the absolute essentials. And that's what Bill Maher did. He uh, well, I mean, keep in mind, it's his writers, too. So I don't know to what extent he's actually involved in this or he's just got some awesome writers for that stuff because uh, as you pointed out we do see him where he's on someone else's show it's not scripted and he's still uh pretty sharp on some of the stuff mm -hmm. so uh, but yeah we're gonna check that we're gonna go through that and if we've got time if we've got time we might revisit revisit the famous sam harris ben affleck moment on uh on real time from several years ago it was funny i was watching i think it was joe rogan I think it was Joe Rogan, and he was saying he thinks that Ben Affleck was roided up at the moment, and that's why he was, like, so enraged. He thinks he was juiced up because he was getting ready for Batman. He, was oh, ready, really? he had to pack on a ton of muscle for Batman, and and, uh, and Rogan's like, come on, all these guys all these guys are take steroids and stuff like that when they have to beef up for a movie. So he's probably just, like, in a roid rage as far as why he looked like he was about to explode. That actually makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It, uh, that's what I mean. I like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I would normally give someone the benefit of the doubt, but he is, uh, he is, uh, a little past his prime and he did pack on a ton of muscle. So it's gross. It's racist. It's gross. It's racist. You're hurting. <laughs> so you're saying that every single Muslim who's ever let, no, we're not saying, so you're saying you just want to kill everybody. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> and yeah. he, he actually, cause, uh, cause I had to pull up the clip. He actually does the same thing we just saw from um, who's that guy we just watched on your channel? What's that guy? Dilly, uh, dilly, dilly, dilly. Yeah, he did that. You remember, as soon as Pierce, as Pierce starts talking, as soon as he's like, "Hey, you know, Sharia is oppressive." Oh, are you an expert in Sharia? Tell us what your qualifications are in Sharia. <laughs> ben Affleck does the same thing as soon as Sam Harris says anything about Islam. Oh, okay, so you're the expert who's here to educate. What are your What are your credentials? He starts doing the exact same thing. And, and I find that amazing because we just, I mean, for decades now, any random politician, any random journalist can explain Islam for it. It's, it's as if anyone kills a man. It's as if he's killed all mankind. You see, this is how we know that it's peaceful. And those guys who are blowing stuff up aren't even Muslim. They're not. Like every politician and every journalist is completely qualified to make pronouncements on who is and who is not a true follower of Muhammad. And is the moment you criticize it, it's like, hey, wait a minute, are you the grand mufti of Islam to be talking about it? Hmm? Did you go to Al-Azhar? Because if you don't, then you're not allowed to speak on it, you bunch of cowards, man. <laughs> oh, we did have, uh, speaking of Joe Rogan, which leads into uh, ultimate fighting, yeah. Uh, tell us what happened with hijab cuz you you sent me you sent me the message where just break down the situation for us that that uh hijab uh, call it, it sound I didn't see what hijab said but but from this guy's response I'm guessing hijab said hey he I challenged the IDF to a fight or something like this. Yeah, I, I don't even I don't even entirely know the background of it, but uh, I, I kind of caught it halfway through because it was uh, somebody brought it to my attention and then I only saw it. But apparently um, because there was a video where um, somebody at the IDF wrote um, a bunch of uh, pro Hamas names like uh, Mohammed Tijab and others um, on a uh, 
on on a on a bomb or a shell uh he made a reaction to it and he was like oh, i challenged the idf to send me to send uh you know their best fighter so that we can have an in-person fight here in the uk or something something dumb like that and you have 12 hours to respond something really stupid you know like typical of mohammed hijab mm-hmm. uh and then this professional fighter from israel what's his name haim something Ghazali. He, uh-huh. Yeah, he responded and he said, hey, I'm going to fight you. Okay, I'll mm-hmm. take it. <laughs> and Mohamed and... Hijab said, when can you come to the UK? And he said, okay, I'm, I'm, arranging, I'm arranging it right now with my manager. <laughs> so now we're going to see what's happening. Yeah, so uh, Haim Ghazali, uh, apologize if we're mispronouncing uh, uh, the name, but I'm looking, he is a third degree black belt in... Brazilian Jiu Jitsu under Henzo Gracie, so the Gracie family, and a bare knuckles brawler. <laughs> Hijab's only advantages are that the guy's 50 years old and that Hijab outweighs him by probably over 100 pounds. The guy's in the 185 pound weight class. Although he might normally be heavier than that, that might be his fight weight. So he, and which he wouldn't have to, he wouldn't have to uh, cut any weight if he's going against a a giant. But yeah, this guy would, this guy would absolutely destroy hijab. So, um, and I mean, any professional fighter, again, we've, we've mentioned before, there was like a 120 year old guy at some, at some protest or something who clocked hijab and uh hijab looked like he hijab had to be like almost carried out of there by people when he's just got his jaw tag so he's got a glass jaw i would and and hijab i'm sure knows that by now so it's going to be interesting to see what hijab does to back out of this because there is no yeah. way there is no way he's actually going to fight a professional fighter even though he was challenging the idf and this guy was in the idf so yeah. this guy meets the requirements and hijab is going to back down. It's just like, what's he going to do? I would guess because he, he doesn't want to say, no, I'm scared. He doesn't want to say that. So he'll probably just keep making more and more conditions for the fight until the guy just says, no, I'm sick with this. Like, he yeah, I, I, know, I know what he's going to do. I know what he's going to do. He's going to say, I have back pain. I was just, uh, I've just been prescribed a certain medication for severe back pain. And here is the, here you can, you can, here is the proof. Therefore, for now, I can't do it. But in the future, I will get back. He'll probably do that because in the past, when he did those uh, crazy tweets, he eventually, uh, blamed it on having uh, severe medication mm-hmm. for back pain, which made him say very strange things. <laughs> so yeah, because because back in the again. day, yeah, back in the day when he was uh, 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 Sam Shamoon challenged him to a debate, and then uh, Hijab's like, "Well, we have to fight. We have to agree to have a fight first. And Sam's like, "Okay," and then Hijab <laughs> doesn't do it. Right, <laughs> so <laughs> it's clear that he issues these fight challenges because he doesn't actually want to fight and he thinks people aren't going to want to have a, a match with him because he's a giant and when he gets his bluff called i, I don't know i've just seen this a million a million times seen this in prison guys go in and run their mouths so as soon as someone steps to them then they back down but yeah it's pretty uh pretty weak pretty pathetic you but it's weak gonna be- it's going to be fun to see. Yeah. See if he will. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Now, he kind of can't do his back pain thing now because you've already called him out for it. Um, <laughs> so he's going to be stuck. <laughs> he's probably going to be he's probably going to hear about this later. And be like, oh, mm, oh, darn. How am I going to get out of it now? That was going to be my excuse. <laughs> yeah, so I think he'll go the other route and tr- try to make as many ridiculous conditions as possible until the guy just backs out in which case we, we someone should probably contact him and let him know hey hijab is going to wriggle out of this by doing something so just keep going just keep going at him saying hey i agree i agree um so yeah it's gonna be funny inshallah inshallah all uh, right we'll do a couple of super chats here and then we'll jump into our video if the quran is eternal then how does the bible being corrupted solve anything wouldn't allah still be telling christians to trust the bible uh, yeah, and as far as the problem with the Quran affirming the Bible, is at the very least the Quran is affirming the inspiration. Everyone knows that uh, it's preserved at least until the time of Muhammad, because it's still it's still authoritative for Christians um, in the seventh century. So there have been Muslims who try to wriggle out of it, who actually read the passages and realize no, the Quran is affirming the Bible in the seventh century. 
And therefore, some have some have tried to claim, so the Bible must have been corrupted after that. And it doesn't work like that. You've got copies of Old and New Testament from long yeah. before the seventh century, so it doesn't work. And it, that's that's the point of the problem. That's just incoherent. The Quran affirms scriptures that completely contradict the Quran, and uh, Islam self destructs like that. Uh, Chloe here says, Dizzle and Woody's in the house. AP and agnostics bring the mouse. Here we are at home with truth and love. Let's stand together, sis and bruv. Nice. Solid. Not too bad. Yeah. Uh, let's see. AP D Wood is delaying his morality debate response video because he knows atheism is the truth. <laughs> Actually, AP's the one delaying that now. I delayed it forever. And then... I said, I'm ready to go. And AP said, no, I'm scared now. I'm scared. I'm scared. Uh, D Wood and AP, to what countries do you want to travel? Uh, only Israel. Just kidding. Um, yeah, it's, uh, every country in the world, except the Muslim world. Yeah, I, I really want to go and hang out in, in Saudi Arabia. and. Oh, yeah. And in uh, Pakistan, <laughs> ooh, Afghanistan. Ooh. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, we should go to Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah I like the countries that are, have like a biblical relevance. So I've been to Israel, but going to Israel again next year. Um, but also the, you know, places like where the Apostle Paul went and stuff like that. And so stuff like that. But then like, I don't know, places with castles. Castles? So Germany has cool castles. I went to New Schwanstein a long time ago. Yeah. Just that wanted to say that you should that go to crap to, hole. You need to go to Germany or to the rest of Europe if you want to see castles. Yeah. Uh, so I've been to Germany. Wouldn't mind going back. Uh, but yeah, Scotland, place like that. Some of the some of the ones I haven't seen. Yeah, that's also good. All right, Chloe here says Mar Bill went up the hill. He saw a jihadi and he said, "Let's party." They pulled a gun. Bill said, "No fun." He pushed them around and on the ground. Jihadi said, why you, why you utter? Why did you stutter? <laughs> and Roddy, P Roddy Piper. I like Roddy Piper. Uh, I slam Islam. That's nice. Uh, Al Puff Daddy, D Wood, how realistic was the TV show Oz? Not realistic at all. That was a prison show. Was That's not. Very dumb. Yeah, it's like t like five people get murdered every show. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, I thought that happens all the time in prison. No, yeah. no, no, no. See, you have uh, see, see, I was East Coast. East Coast is totally different from what a lot of people see on like so, like uh, like if the farther you go west, the more racial, the, the more everything has to break up into racial gangs and so on. Uh, whereas East Coast, you will have gangs, but they're like gangs. It's not like race based gangs and so on. There you go out, and if you're white, you have to join the Aryan Brotherhood or the uh, the Woods or something like that. And if you're black, you have your gang. And you know, if you if you're uh, Latino, you join this gang and so on. And uh, but um, yeah, Oz, no, it's a uh, but but it, when when you get out there, you don't you just don't have killings every day because every people get their own uh, sort of organizations to uh, prevent that. You will have killings and so on. It's just not like every it's just not like every single day it's happening. Uh, AP, I love your Southern drawl. What's funny. your favorite? What's your favorite accent, AP? What's my favorite accent? Um, my favorite accent. I really like some of those British accents, although I can't really can't I can't do them very well. Oh, you mean but, the smart the smart British accent? Yeah, yeah, the smart British accents and uh, yeah, the Richard Dawkins or the um, Douglas or the, Murray uh, type. Douglas Murray. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> not this one, there, Governor. Not that one. <laughs> Hey, what are you talking about, mate? I've gone and bloody wet myself. <laughs> or the or the or the dumb Islamic version. <laughs> Yo, cause I'm going down to the store, right? It's just it's weird that you know you can have one British accent and it'll make you sound like the smartest person in the world, and you have a different one and you sound like a total idiot. Yeah. That's true. That is true. Uh D Wood has a nice clean stream, Christian. AP gets his stream age restricted. Atheist, draw your own conclusions. Yep, it is. Uh, it is sad that AP's live streams have become so vile that they have to be age restricted. Violent. Yeah, unfortunately. From JT, 
Uh, oh gosh, we still have a bunch more super chats here. All right, let's go ahead and start the video and then we'll get back to some let's super chats. Let's, let's All right. Do. Again, guys, uh, if you're just tuning in, we are going to have to pause this. Uh, we already pause a lot. If people wonder why we pause so much, it's if you, why don't you just play the whole thing? Because you get a copyright strike. That's that's why you can't just, and that's why I usually put the videos like I do this. I'll usually put a video in the description box for people who want to just watch the entire thing uh, uninterrupted. Um, so you actually have to. And if you're watching us, it's probably because uh, you. Uh, uh, because you're a gangster. You want to see our thoughts on something. So we normally pause quite a bit. We're going to have to make sure we don't play. Basically, if I played this for a minute, if I played this clip for a minute straight with no interruption, uh, the entire live stream might get taken down. Because that's how stupid HBO rolls. All right, let's go ahead and check out uh, our good friend Bill Maher. And finally, new rule. I know it's supposed to be that magical time of year, but maybe what we all really need right now is a good dose of realism. <laughs> I see a lot of nativity scenes. Ah, you see what he did there? Realism. His show is called Real Time. Get it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I'm out, as you always do before Christmas, and I can't help thinking about where that manger really is. It's in the West Bank on Palestinian land controlled by the Palestinian Authority. In 1950, the little town of Bethlehem was 86% Christian. Now it's overwhelmingly Muslim. I was wow. waiting. I was waiting for him to make fun of Christians right here. <laughs> when I saw that, I was waiting for him to make fun of Christians. Isn't that I was like, ah, he's about to make fun of Christians. Nope, wrong. He's not doing that at all. Watch. And that's my point tonight. Things change. To 2.3 billion Christians, there can be no more sacred site than where their savior was born, but they don't have it anymore. And yet no crusader army has geared up to take it back. Things change. Wow. Didn't expect that, right? You don't, you usually don't expect that when you, uh, <laughs> when you open a Bill Maher video. Yeah. I mean, especially it's, it's Bill Maher talking about Christmas. You just know he's going to toss in some pagan myth theory or something like that into it. Uh -huh. uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, the fact that he's just pointing out, Hey guys, uh, you don't see Christians running around going on massacre sprees to get back uh, Bethlehem. <laughs> and it's interesting because not only is it a holy site for Christians, he's pointing out Christians had that. Christians had that very recently. Christians had, Christians controlled that in the 20th century. So you're talking the same time that Palestinians are saying, uh, saying that they that they had their territory and so on. Okay, great. Well, Bethlehem was was Christian. It's not anymore. Yeah. It's not anymore. And yet, for some reason, you don't see Christians like around the world. Uh, I mean, you, notice you don't see protests, anything. But if you ask. Dan and Kikich or something, they will say well, it's because it's good. It's because Christians don't follow their religion properly. Yes, Otherwise, they should it be, be violent. They should be massacring everybody. <laughs> what a dope. Um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, I thought he, I <laughs> seriously thought he was about to just make fun, like at, li at least a, a throwaway joke or something like that about Christians and uh, didn't didn't do that interesting stuff. Uh, but yeah, so so he's, he's, he's about to do a series of these on people getting their minds around the idea that, hey, the world has changed. We don't control that anymore. That's life. Sorry. Doesn't work. What are so we going to do? We got we to start a war over it? All right. Yes. Countries, boundaries, empires. Palestine was under the Ottoman Empire for 400 years, but today an Ottoman is something you put under your feet. Ch-ch-ch-ch-changes. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually funny because I didn't think of that. Like, you ask a person today, hey, Ottoman Empire, they have no clue what anything is, they, if they might know an Ottoman as a piece of furniture, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, and yet that, yeah. was a, that was an empire. That was a world empire a century ago. It was a big empire. I see that we had the golden age of the Ottoman Empire, and now we have nothing. That's when the Caliphate fell, ladies and gentlemen. It was when, my empire. When Muslim nations messed with Western nations, which were way more powerful by that time. Yes. Good one, Bill. The uh, city of Byzantium became the city of Constantinople, became Istanbul. Not everybody liked it, but you can't keep arguing the call forever. The Irish 
had the entire island to themselves, but the British were starting an empire, and well, the Irish lost their tip. <laughs> yeah. So he, yeah. he starts with, uh, so he starts with uh, Bethlehem and uh, Christians. Christians controlled that very recently. They had a majority there very recently, and it's a holy site. You don't see Christians starting bloodbaths. Uh, Constantinople conquered by Muslims, even even very recently. I mean, what what was this like three three four years ago when uh, when your hero uh, Erdogan said he's he's changing it from a museum back to a mosque? Yeah, that was several years ago. Uh -huh. Yeah, so he did that. Uh, you don't see any bloodbath. How dare you? We'll slaughter you. We're going to blow you up. You don't see it. Um, and now he's talking about the Irish in England that they fought for. A, they fought for a while. They fought for a while. Were violent for a while. And watch. They, uh, it, it wasn't, they it wasn't blew that funny. Yeah, it wasn't that funny. funny. <laughs> hey, someone... Chloe gifted 50 Apologetics Roadshow I just saw that. Do you see that? Like On my channel, she like gifts maybe one or two, and then on your channel, she gifts 50. Because well, she understands my channel's way, way better. Actually, I was <laughs> I was going to do the 50 yesterday on your channel, but I was like, no, AP did 20. I can't do 50. It's like I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to outdo it. So I'll just I'll just match I'll just match what he did. Nice. So that's cool. Nice. Um, all right, where are we? Ireland. And people laughing way too much because it wasn't that funny. He said, lost the tip of Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Each other yeah. up over it for 30 years. That would have been. <laughs> he should have done a circumcision joke there. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, yeah. with yeah. Ireland. <laughs> Wait, is that the joke when he says losing the tip? I don't know. I think, I think it looks like it sounds like it. No. They blew each other up over it for 30 years, but eventually everybody comes to an accommodation. Mm -hmm. Irish voters north and south give resounding yes to peace. So fought for a while, and then they don't want to fight anymore. Except the Palestinians. Yeah, let's back that up right there. He points oh, out. Because of, that, because of that song, Zombie. That's why yeah. they made peace. He says everyone, everyone, fights for, everyone fights for a while and doesn't want to continue it forever, except... Okay. They blew each other up over it for 30 years, but eventually everybody comes to an accommodation, except the Palestinians. Whoa. Except the that Palestinians. Sounds that sounds pretty harsh. The reason, the, reason I, the reason I like this clip is because he's, that, that's the takeaway, guys. You can, say, you can believe, you can believe entirely and completely that Israel was wrong, that the Jews were wrong back in the 20th century. You can believe that Jews took the land. They just went in there and strong armed it. You don't have to, you don't have to believe that there were that there were Jews who were still living there, who had always been living there. You don't have to believe that there were uh, Jews who went and bought property there and lived there because they bought they bought land. You don't have to you don't have to believe that it was under that it was the British mandate of Palestine that it was the British controlled it because they conquered the Ottoman Empire and that no you no there weren't these Palestinian people who've been living there all the all along and who are being you you, you don't have to believe you could believe the standard myth and you could say. All right, that's a, that was that was a long time ago. There's nothing we can do about it now, and therefore we need to we need to try to find peace. Yeah, you could do that, and you could be working towards a, a two state solution. You could be doing all of that, and be completely wrong about everything, and still have peace as a goal. But with this one group and this one this one area, no, that's never on the table. It's just you have to fight until you wipe out. You completely wipe out one side. And the people that you want to wipe out are just massively more powerful than you. So you can't actually do it. And so what you're actually calling for is endless terrorism. Yes. And, and endless re retaliation from, from them after you do your Precis terrorist attack. Precisely. And endless, uh, hey, we built some buildings and up oh, now they got bombed. Oh, let's build some buildings again. Up, oh, they've gotten bombed. You just want to keep that up forever because you don't want to realize we cannot beat these guys. Precisely. Precisely. Was it unjust that even a single Arab family was forced to move upon the founding of the Jewish state? Yes, but it's also not rare, happening all through history, 
all over the world, and mostly what people do is make the best of it. After World War II, 12 million ethnic Germans got shoved out of Russia and Poland and Czechoslovakia because being German had become kind of unpopular. <laughs> Yeah. Why are, you uh, laughing at, why are you laughing at German jokes, man? <laughs> it's it's a nice way to put it. It's weird. Uh, yeah, I mean, you've lived in Germany and Turkey, yeah. and you and you you constantly uh, make fun of Germany and Turkey. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I am. I it is. Um, some gratitude. I, I will. I shall. The thing, the good thing about this clip is, um, as you pretty much just mentioned, but. Uh, to to emphasize that the good thing about this clip is that he doesn't sit down there and try to explain why this is uh you know this side's fault or that side's fault or why um you know why why it was not unjust um why it was deserved and all of that he doesn't he doesn't spend time on any of this in this clip all he says is hey something happened a long time ago get over it it you will not get anywhere by making by continuing to fight it is yeah. injustice happens if it's if it's injustice let's say it's injustice it happens everywhere you can't just be stuck on that and, and you know in prolong the suffering of everybody yeah it's a i mean it's a weird situation just imagine i mean pretty much anywhere you go in the world there's there are some there were some people there before you and so what do they do do they just are they endlessly going to try to kill you or are you going to say okay the world has changed the world has changed, ladies and gentlemen. We need to live with it. So point is, if you have an accurate understanding of what happened with Israel, you would say, OK, I hope the Palestinians stop this stuff. Even if you have a completely inaccurate, inaccurate picture of what happened, you should still be saying, hey, uh, we need to move forward and, and get past this uh, constant fighting. Inshallah. Inshallah. And it will all be settled. Yeah, inshallah. When Muhammad Hijab fights Haim, Haim Ghazali. Inshallah. UFC never. A million Greeks were shoved out of Turkey in 1923, a million Ghanaians out of Nigeria in 1983, almost a million French out of Algeria in 1962. Nearly a million Syrian refugees moved to Germany eight years ago. Was that a perfect fit? According to Germans, yeah. It's funny as soon as soon as as soon as he started going through these, I was like, "Ah, he's going to talk about he's going to talk about the Jews getting kicked out. He's going to talk about Jews getting kicked out of countries. All right, going to talk about it." No one knows more about being pushed off land than the Jews, including being almost wholly kicked out of every Arab country they once lived in. <laughs> yes, oh, thank Americans. you. Perfect. <laughs> that should be. Thank you, guys. Uh, if you want to get one of these lists. Of Jews who are kicked out of Muslim countries, just kicked off their land, fleeing for their lives. Um, that's one of the most important things you can you can ever share. In yeah. because if you're taught, if people are saying, "Hey, the Palestinians had land in what is now Israel." Just, you know, back in 1940, back in the 1940s, they had this and therefore they have a right to get that back. OK, then give the Jews back their land in Algeria, Egypt, Iraq, Lebanon, Libya, Morocco, Syria and so on. Give it back. Give it back. No one's going to do it. Give it why? back. Right so, why, so why? Why don't Muslims have to give back land when they kick Jews off land? But Jews supposedly have to just walk off, walk out of Israel. And hand it over to Hamas. Please explain that. We don't get it. We don't understand that. We don't think you're being consistent at all. Yeah. It's so good to see that he actually brought this up on a um, on this mainstream platform here, because this is something that so rarely comes up. It's it's something that, that is that is mentioned by certain people on social media, but it's so rarely addressed on mainstream platforms it's it's so good that he did this and here's the thing like when it comes to the um to the expulsion or you know displacement of jews from the arab countries um there is some nuance to that and i want to be fair with that uh and, and some people will say well it, it wasn't completely you know being kicked out uh that's that's correct the, the zionists in israel they actually preferred jews from around the world coming in 
to Israel. And they specifically mentioned among their projects in the beginnings that um, they must take into, into consideration the capacity that uh, their state can offer because um, a lot of the Mizrahi Jews, the Eastern Jews in the Arab world, uh, may or will come to Israel and will make this their new home. But that didn't happen for no reason. They didn't just think, oh, uh, you know, those Jews uh, in those countries, they live there very, very well. But you know what? Just to mess with them, let's just let's let's have them all come here and leave those countries. No, they um, a lot of them chose to move out to flee. A lot of them were encouraged to go to Israel. A lot of them were directly deported and kicked out. And that because uh, the, the Jews experienced a lot of oppression, a lot of pogroms, a lot of uh, harassment, blood libels, and this and that over the centuries, but especially uh, in the 20th century, uh, all of this intensified even more. And and in the Arab world, Jews, Jews around the world, around the Arab world were basically mistreated as a result of what is happening in, uh, in the whole you know, Palestine region, which only proves the point that Jews need a safe home for themselves. Because whenever there is something happening that involves Jews, or even if there is nothing happening, they will always crack down on their own Jewish population and threaten them. And that is how they all lost their Jewish populations. Um, I think another countries are on this list. <laughs> Tunisia, Ethnic cleansing happened both ways. In fact, oh, wait. <laughs> I think he says, yes, kids on TikTok. Let's see. Lived in. Yes, TikTok fans. Ethnic, <laughs> <laughs> ethnic cleansing happened both ways. That's funny that he's like, <laughs> he's aware of what's going on on TikTok. And although, <laughs> hey, maybe Bin Laden was right. He's got a good idea. And, oh, maybe, maybe Hitler was smarter than we thought he was. Yeah, I'm on TikTok and I'm a moron. These are lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for all the uh, millions of new channel members and so on, should be a new video up for early access tomorrow. So check your stuff tomorrow. Did um, you just say millions of new channel members? Yeah, millions of new channel members. Oh, okay. If you have a problem with exaggeration, then you have a problem with uh, saying that your show is the most watched show in the entire universe. Well, it's accurate, though. So. In Fedor on the Roof, the family is always moving to stay one step ahead of the Cossacks, but they deal with it. When they're leaving Anatevka, they say, hey, it wasn't so great anyway. What are you laughing at? Do you know what that, do you know what Fiddler on the Roof is? Yes, I do. I, I don't. I, I don't know what that is. You don't know that, you don't know Fiddler on the Roof? Yeah, it's, no. a, it's, a, it's a movie. Um, you should watch it. It's very good. Really? Okay. Yes. It's very good. Come on. Like other countries don't have roofs you could fiddle on. It sucks. Now I actually want to look up the plot on Wikipedia so I get the joke. <laughs> now, now, that's not how they really felt, but they were coping. They coped because sometimes that's all you can do. History is brutal and humans are not good people. History. You just said humans are not good people. I know that sounds very. <laughs> Humans are not good people. <laughs> Humans suck. We're pure, pure evil. <laughs> they coped because sometimes that's all you can do. History is brutal, and humans are not good people. His He's right. Humans suck. Yeah, yeah. And notice, I mean, notice the. Uh, How dare you say humans suck? I'm a human. Notice the. Notice the completely completely simple reasoning there the world is an imp is an imperfect place humans suck and do horrible things you have to try and get along in the world and not just try to destroy it because you don't get your way all the time because you're not going to get your way out all the time you have to live with it you have to live with the fact that some stuff happens that you're not going to agree with and you, you don't have a bloodbath every time you uh something doesn't go your way Humans are amazing, man. Fantastic. Very sad and full of wrongs, but you can't make them unhappen because a paraglider isn't a time machine. P 
People get moved and, yes, colonized. Nobody was a bigger colonizer than the Muslim army that swept. Ouch! <laughs> Love this guy, man. <laughs> This is yes. what I mean. This is what I this is what I mean. Apart from the fiddler on the roof joke, which there's a point to it, but you could have replaced that with some other with some other joke making the same point. He's he's just he's just like crushing every single like if if he were to ask us, hey, I've got I've got eight minutes or nine minutes or something like that to hit every point I really, really, really need to hit. What are the most important things? He's nailing them. Yeah. Isn't a time machine. People get moved and, yes, colonized. Nobody was a bigger colonizer than the Muslim army that swept out of the Arabian desert and took over much of the world in a single century. Peacefully. And they didn't do it by asking. They didn't do it by asking? This, this is so good. I, I, um, I saw my wife watching it. Like uh, this, this was the other day. We were done with our live stream. And then uh, I sat down and she was watching it. And I was like, is, is that Bill Maher? She said, yeah. And then I'm, I'm listening while doing something else. And I hear him mention these things. And I thought, yes, yes, this is exactly the Bill Maher that I know. This Thank is perfect. This is perfect. This is, <laughs> this is as close to a perfect monologue on this topic as I think you could have. I can't, I can't imagine, I can't even think of like how to, how to improve it. Um, like, like any, any section of what he's saying, he's like, he's just crushing it. Mm -hmm. There's a reason Saudi Arabia's flag is a sword. Kosovo was the cradle of Christian Serbia. Then it became Muslim. They fought a war about it in the 90s, but stopped. They didn't keep it going for 75 years. <laughs> I mean, I mean, notice again, if, if people, people say they're anti, well, we're not anti-Semitic, we're anti-Zionist. And then in their minds, it'll make sense. They'll be able to rationalize it in their minds. Oh, I'm just against this horrible injustice that has occurred. You know, if you were actually, if it, if it, if it, if you didn't just have a problem with Jews, then if it, if if you really thought, hey, there was this, you know, this injustice uh, many many decades ago, and therefore you just have to keep fighting and slaughtering uh, to write that, you would be saying that about all these places. You'd be saying that about all these places, and you would be saying that Jews should be out. Uh, that 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 uh, the Israeli army should be using its uh, its firepower to go back and seize land uh, in in Muslim countries. It should be doing that if you actually believed it, and if you didn't just have a problem with Jews. So the idea that no 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 we're just in pro we just have a problem with this injustice because we're we're against injustice. Okay, then you should be having a problem with all these other places, and you should be saying that Christians should be slaughtering Muslims right there. Instead of uh, instead of eventually coming to uh, coming to terms to avoid the bloodbath, but you don't. There's this one spot in the entire world, and it just happens it, because it involves Jews that you have to have a, an on an endless bloodbath. Plus, it's also um, it's it's complete nonsense when they argue that this is not about Islam. Um, it, in in the most throughout the Muslim world, you will always hear them say to each other, "We are Muslims. We have to stand up for each other. This is about Islam. This is about Islam. It's 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 about Islam versus the enemy." They say that all the time. Um, but somehow, when they want to bring it to uh, these these uh, you know international conversations, they want to make it just about oh, this is about humanity. It's, it's about, about human oppression. rights. Yeah, it's, and notice sorry, the the the, the wonderful United Nations. Ah, oh, we're 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 just seeking justice. We're, you guys don't do that anywhere else in the entire planet, except when Jews are involved. Yeah. All right, uh, a couple of super chats real quick. Uh, big rig, you see, I you see, you see. I don't have a point. I just wanted to yell that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I don't have a point. I just wanted to yell that. <laughs> That's good. I'm That's sure good. someone will. Uh, sure someone will take me seriously um chloe here my friend tried to make far four gpt but failed due to getting ai to use far four hate speech against jews it breaks the, <laughs> it breaks the policy that's funny <laughs> that makes sense i'm trying i think i think you can you can get some other ai program that you can modify to far four gpt <laughs> yeah the there are some alternatives, apparently. Uh, that would be funny if you asked it. You could ask it questions like, "Hey, I didn't finish my homework. What do I do?" You got, you got to blame the Jews. You got to blame the Jews. Say the Jews bought your house. <laughs> it's so stupid, man. 
Karan Studios presents Brokeback Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> More like Broke Butt Muhammad. <laughs> and the leather strapping of the anus in cinemas near AP. Uh, yeah, so Muhammad liked to be kissed all over his milky white flesh by dudes. Not making that up. Sunan Abu Daoud. And he had some very strange meetings with a guy named Dija al Kalbi. Beautiful. And so Dija would be leaving Muhammad's house and Muhammad would tell his wives that that was the angel Gabriel who was visiting him. And of course, then Muhammad would need all the semen washed off his clothes. Hey, hey, we should be using that. I think Black Angel said something like this, but it, with, with hijab. Hey, we should post it. We should, <laughs> we should, we should be tweeting this. We should say, hey, now that... Uh, now that Haim has agreed to fight, we bet Muhammad Hijab's response will be as slippery as, <laughs> as his prophet's garments after Dia Al Kalbi visited him. <laughs> Gross. We should, it, we should do that. That's, just, that's it, what he would do. Isn't it crazy that you're, you, you're reading about Muhammad and you're like reading about the only. Uh, I mean, you're t you've got true prophets and false prophets. You got like one guy in all of history had this problem of it, of constantly being covered in semen, and this is like your your supreme. That was a real example. problem. It was a real problem. It was a very serious problem. No, it's it's funny. Like uh, they say, when Aisha's age is brought up, sometimes they say it was very important because uh, Aisha. Um, she delivered a lot of the very important hadiths. She delivered lots of uh, very important information about Muhammad. And then the important semen, information. Semen, 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 is, semen, like, semen, 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 <laughs> semen. I used to, I used to scrub semen off of the prophet's clothes. Well, great. Fantastic. Thank you. No, I really had to scrape a lot off. I mean, I would scrape it and scratch it. And she talks about scratching it <laughs> okay, with her fingernails thank you. and yes, scraping it and washing it and she's and then she'd say even after she like try, thought she'd washed it all off she'd see more and she's like stop 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 and he's going to the mosque but notice she's actually like scraping it off with her fingernail scraping the semen off his clothes because he's heading to the mosque yeah and and he's going out and i, I don't know what the customs were back then but is this guy hugging it out I, I would not touch this dude i would not want to be within five feet of this dude yeah even if i'm talking about if i were a muslim i wouldn't want to be within five feet of a guy Who's got semen all over? <laughs> Imagine you—you you are Muhammad back then. Uh, so you are—you are Muhammad's companion back then. You are sitting at the mosque waiting for the prayer to start, and Muhammad walks in, as usual, as always, his clothes full of semen. And you're like, oh, this is this is just getting weird, man. It's pretty and creepy. I should tell some hey. Ya Rasulullah, you cannot continue doing this. Please let me scrub some of it off. And he's like, yeah, fine. Okay, just be quick. <laughs> here, here, let me pull it off for you so you can scrub it. Well, this guy kisses me all over my old wrinkly, <laughs> milky white body. <laughs> Man. Um, Drunk Vax here says, how much does Masad pay you? Also, eat full Quran. Uh, AP said he would eat a full Quran for $20,000. <laughs> 20,000. Yeah, 20,000. Yeah, he said 20,000. Um, I don't know how much that is in shekels for the Mossad agents who are watching. But uh, I mean, people, you can see how Mossad funnels money to us through Super Chat. So you can actually yeah. calculate it up if you want it. Yeah. Uh, so here Khan said, was funny mustache man inspired by Islam. Love you guys. Take my jizya, please. Oh, thanks for talking about the guy you always rush to defend the painter um <laughs> the painter the great my, my favorite painter <laughs> <laughs> uh i wouldn't say he was inspired by no. it he was just um he he had his he was um he got radicalized really badly um during the first world war and in, in the aftermath uh where yeah, he took it very very seriously and um it was a giant failure and I don't know, there, there, there's a lot to it. And then in, in um, cafes and in gatherings where people would talk about the politics, he, he was introduced to this whole idea that, um, that, the, that the, 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 the Germans have so much potential, so many things that they should be doing, but it's all the Jews, the Jews, they're all preventing it. They, they, the Jews are getting in the way. The Jews are even behind the First World War. The Jews are behind the fact that, that Germans lost the First World War and something like that. And he was just looking for someone to blame. He picked that up. He later did praise Islam specifically several times, uh, but I wouldn't say that he was inspired by it. 
Yeah, he got, uh, yeah, I'd say some somewhat influence, but yeah, ideas seem to be based on mainly on the superiority of his people and the German yeah, people right. and the inferiority of, uh, of the Jewish people and so on. But with that said, he seemed to have a connection with Islam. Hey, they've, hey, hey, they've noticed some similar things there. It's the best um, religion. Why did we have Christianity? Why Christianity? That's what he said. Basically. And he did, he did notice that you, because of the Armenian genocide, he did notice that you can get away with something like that. Cause people would have thought you can't, you can't haul off millions of people in, in, in cattle cars and, and execute them and so on. And no, you can, you actually can. Uh, you the look Turks at the, did the, it. The, yeah. The Turks and so you got that and Turkey. then he becomes, and then he becomes buddies with the Imagine actually having like transcripts of his discussions with the uh, with the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. We actually have. We actually no, have. Uh, we have some of them. I, I did. I made a live stream several weeks ago where I uh, read through one of those, which is which comes directly from German records, where um, hmm. a, a meeting between the two is documented and they are discussing. And Hitler says to him specifically, he gives him promises, and he s says, "Now listen to me uh, very closely." Uh, because I promise these things to you. And he says, uh, once we defeat uh, the Soviets, the communists, um, we will get down from uh, Caucasia and then we will, uh, once our path is opened, we will have an open alliance. Meanwhile, you will have prepared all your Arab forces and then together we will unite and, uh, and we will make sure to eliminate the Jewish element mm -hmm. within the Arab world and stuff like that. So th th these are things that he actually said. Mm -hmm. And that they are on German record, but yeah, and not just that. For purposes yeah. of consistency, again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, notice that Muhammad, when he wanted to um, get rid of the uh, the the Banu Nader, he simply said uh, he could simply say, "Hey, I had a uh, I had a dream or I had a vision that these guys are going to try to uh, kill me," and that was enough to to get rid of them, to kick them out. So, following that. Following that, before before Israel, before Israel, the Jews in that area could say, wait, we know these guys want to kill us. Why? Uh, you got the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem meeting with Hitler and, and coming up with plans. We know they want to kill us. We know it. We know it. Therefore, we, even according to Islamic principles, have a right to defend ourselves against the threat, against the threat. We have a right to take precautions to guard against the threat and to say, you guys need to just, just get away from us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Chloe here says, Green Prince, he chose Dachau. Green Prince, why and how? He doesn't believe Jesus existed. Pray for him. His mind is twisted. Is that from something? Is that like a lullaby or something? Green Prince? Are you familiar with that? No, no. The Green Prince is the is the, the, the name for um, Mosab Hassan Yusuf. That was his code name when he was working for, oh. <laughs> for, for the for the for the Shin bit. I chose the cow. <laughs> that guy's nuts, yeah. man. <laughs> they they called him. They gave him the code name the Green Prince because he's the son of a of the Hamas <laughs> co-founder. When they were working with him, that guy's that guy's crazy, man. I chose yeah. the cow. <laughs> Larry yeah. says, did you see, yeah, we talked about this. Did you see the Turkish parliament member collapse and die after threatening Israel with Allah's wrath at, at the end of his speech? It's not funny, but it was kind of funny. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, like the timing and yeah. So Larry, yeah, I don't think you've seen where, where we've talked about this before, but, um, AP obviously can't believe in any sort of divine retribution. Uh, I believe in the possibility of that sort of thing, but I don't know. I also believe that people can just have heart attacks and so on. So wouldn't know. But what we would agree on is if that if this happened in reverse, if it were uh, a member of the you know of the Israeli government who's saying, "and we will crush Hamas and we will never stop until we have crushed Hamas," and they drop dead, that would be used for the next for the next uh, 50 years to show that that uh, God is on the side of, uh, of Hamas. Yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas. It is well, Christmas coming up. It's too soon. AP's like, no, it's pagan. <laughs> Rashan says, I've been watching you guys almost every night. Now I want to join the show. We'll be more... Uh, happy to join you guys. We'll be more than happy to join. Who are you? Who is this? Who who are you? Everyone you wants to join our show because we have awesome shows. 
Roshan, what would you contribute to the show? Would it be awesome? All right, let's go. Let's go through uh, Yeah, let's go. Some more Bill Maher. So we're on Kosovo. There were deals on the table to share the land called Palestine mm -hmm. in 1947, 93, 95, 98, 2000, 2008. And East Jerusalem could have been the capital of a Palestinian state that today might look more like Dubai than Gaza. Difficult. He crushed it again, though, by pointing out, yeah. "Hey, you guys had your chance at a at a at a two state solution over and over and over again. You were offered this over and over and over again. You rejected it over and over and over again, and then you complain that you don't have a, your own state. Isn't that isn't that nuts? By the way, <laughs> like like hey, Jews are like, hey, you, here you can have this state. No, we don't want it. Look, look, no, we'll give you a state. No, we don't want it. Look, we'll, we'll here it is. Here, take your state. No, we won't want it. We want all of it. Okay, we, you, you're not getting all of it, but we'll give you a state. No, we don't want it. And then, oh, why don't we have our own state? Why? <laughs> it's so it's so weird that um, the the president. Um, President, Prime Minister, Ehud Olmert, uh, in 2008, he made the offer of um, giving the West Bank, almost the entire West mm -hmm. Bank, over to them, while, while only keeping um, very small portions, uh, you know, as Israeli settlements as part of Israel, but giving more than 90 something percent to, to the Palestinians and uh, to have them declare their sovereign state and for Israel to recognize that state. It was so generous yeah. after after this entire history. And he said um, his very clear words to, to, uh, to Ahmed Abbas were something along the lines of, um, look, agree to this because there will not be anyone for the next 50 years who will uh, make who will make you such an offer from our side mm -hmm. take this but no they rejected it yeah and uh, i was when i was there an idf guy actually broke it down to us uh why he's saying he, he's like in this year we we offered them 97 percent of what they wanted this year we offered them 98 percent of what they wanted and so on and he said uh they they always they always of course reject it he said as far as like the and keep in mind, guys, these these are for the two state solutions. So these are negotiations trying to get a two state solution. And the uh, a Palestinian group will say, here's all the land we want and it, as part of two states. So as, as a compromise and not saying that we get all of Israel or something like that, here's everything we want and we will make guarantees of peace if you uh, if you give us this. And Israel would say, we can't give you all of that. We'll give you 97%. There's a, there, are, there are reasons. And some of it would be, okay, you want that hill, but there's a Jewish village at the bottom of that hill. And you can't have that hill because it would be very easy to just toss bombs literally off, off the side of the hill and bomb this village anytime you guys get, get upset. So you can't have the top of that hill. You can, just can't have that. And so these are the, these are the limitations that they're putting on it. Uh, but and, and, and so rejected completely. Yeah, rejected. But over and over and over again, you could have your state, you could have your state, you could have your state, you reject it, you reject it, you reject it. And then you whine, why don't, why don't we have our state? And then you've got all these morons on college campuses running around going, uh, who, uh, shouting from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, thinking that they're calling for a two state solution, not realizing they're calling for they're calling for genocide and calling for Israel to be completely wiped off the map. Uh, here is uh, Bill Maher is making a, a good point here and, and, and raising something good. Now, the thing is, if you want to go back into the history, you can do the blame game forever. Um, but it, it will turn out that uh, actually the violence and all of that was started uh, every single time almost uh, on the, from the Arab side because they didn't like um, the idea that the Jews are coming there and that they are playing with the thoughts of establishing a proper home for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and but let's say let's say let's say it's the other part side's fault and let's say you know you lost your land that, that that's very far from what actually happened but let, let's say that's what happened it's it's been so many years it is it has been uh it, the, the whole conflict the first violent conflict between the arabs and the, the and the zionists in the region started in 1920 1920 it's been more than 100 years after so much time of you guys not being able to figure it out, of losing again and again and again and again and again, maybe you should 
come to terms with the fact that yes, things were different back then. They didn't go your way. You wanted all of the land for you, didn't go your way. Maybe you should at some point settle for what you have as a result of mm-hmm. your of lack of or, or your, your failure in diplomacy. But no, you just want to go back to the very beginning and act like, no, we don't, we have, we never lost. Yeah. We never, we cannot lose. We must go back and get every single thing that we think belonged to us at some point. That's just ridiculously stupid. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. And that's what, I mean, that's what uh, Bill Maher was pointing out with all these other examples. Everyone understands that things change, situations change. You may have controlled this at one point, but then you don't control it anymore. Now you're outnumbered. What do you do? And everyone in the world eventually realizes, okay, we have to move on. We have to move on. We can't fight over this forever, except one group that is also encouraged by millions and millions of uh, other people around the world, not just in their religious group, but also morons on college campuses and so on. No, keep fighting, keep fighting. That's the one place on the planet where you can never have peace at all until you until yeah. you commit genocide, and then you can have peace. Ridiculous. They're basically encouraging the Palestinian population and the Israeli population there to mm-hmm. just continue suffering instead of yeah. making peace and trying to figure out something, something good out for everyone. Oh, man, we've got over, over 3,000 people watching live. That's crazy. Just wanted to say that. Yeah, we just cracked the 3,000. 3,000! Imagine, imagine when we hit four one day. That'd be dope. Nice. This and is the second five. time that we are over 3,000. So no, it's the third time. Third time? Oh, second, okay. second time on my channel we've been over. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Arafat was offered 95% of the West Bank and 95%. said, no. Mm-hmm. The Palestinian people should know your leaders and the useful idiots on college campuses who are their allies are not doing you any favors by keeping alive the river to the sea myth. I mean, where do you think Israel is going? Spoiler alert, nowhere. And guess what? You know, you you could sit here and think, (laughs) oh, why is he siding with the that? He started this off by saying we need we need to we need to be realistic here. Let's get let's be realistic here. (laughs) <laughs> that is yeah. completely realistic. You could be the most pro-Palestine people in the world and still say he's absolutely correct. Israel's not going anywhere. That's just life. You're not, you're not wiping off. You're not wiping Israel off the map. It's not going to happen. It's just so, not. Get over it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just it's just because it's so simple, guys. Okay, <laughs> you continue fighting, not because you want your own separate state, you could have had that a million times. You keep fighting because you want to completely wipe out this group that is massively more powerful than you than you can't hope to defeat ever. Well, that's ever. Good. You can't do it. They're too powerful for you to stop. What do you do? You live with it then. And you try to do the best that you can. That's very, very simple and commonsensical. We can't wipe them out. Therefore, the best we can do is have our own state. And you could have it. And you could have it. My goodness, they're stupid. Good point. Good point, Bill. Good point. It's one of the most powerful countries in the world with the $500 billion economy, the world's second largest tech sector after Silicon Valley. And that, that, That's interesting, isn't it? Second? Like, there's, there, Israel is second to Silicon Valley as far as the yeah. tech sector nuclear weapons. They're here. They're nuclear. They like their bagel with a schmear. Get used to it. Are you familiar with that? Do you know what he just did there? Yes. Yes. I know. With the... So for everyone who's watching from different parts of the world, there's a, there's the, uh, there's a famous chant uh, when people were um, calling for like gay marriage rights and so on that they would say, we're here, we're queer, live with it. And he switched it to... <laughs> They're here. They like the their bagel with a schmear. Yeah. What's happening to Palestinians today is horrible, and not just in Gaza, in the West Bank too. But wars end with negotiation, and what the media glosses over is it's hard to negotiate when the other side's bargaining position is you all die and disappear. Yes. 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 This Precisely. dude's crushing it, man. And it's so stupid that this simple point is not being mentioned and, 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 and people just act like this is not a thing. It's a reality. The, the Palestinian side overwhelmingly believes in eventually, 
you know, destroying the other side and getting all of the land. Hamas explicitly said many, many times in their charter and also over the decades, even as recently as 2019 publicly, that they believe all Jews need to be killed. So how do you negotiate with that? Yeah. I, I would say I would say you are under no obligation to negotiate with those uh, with, with, if that's the goal of the opposing side. And you are yeah. you are entirely justified in taking precautions to make sure they do not ever have the opportunity to do that to you. Somehow, no, you've got one side that wants to exterminate the other side and the side that these guys want to exterminate, isn't allowed to take any sort of precautions to defend itself from these guys. This, this is insane. It's insane. No one applies that rule to anyone else in the world except Jews. Alhamdulillah. I mean, the chant from the river to the sea. Yeah, let's look at the map. Here's the river. <laughs> He's good. Here's the sea. <laughs> oh, I see. It means you get all of it. Not just the West Bank, which was basically the original UN partition deal you rejected because you wanted all of it and always have, even though it's indisputably also the Jews' ancestral homeland. And so you attacked and lost. Ouch. And attacked again and lost. And attacked again and lost. As my friend Dr. <laughs> Phil says, how's that working for you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Dr. Phil will say that when uh, someone's got their way of doing things and it just keeps failing and failing and failing. And failing. Hey, how's that working for you? <laughs> <laughs> I, you, you, have, you have to wonder because you can, you can think from an Islamic perspective. You can think, you know, Allah's just testing us. He's testing our resolve. But they do does, think. Yeah, that's what I mean. But does there ever come a point where you just realize, okay, God's just not on our side in this. He's obviously not on our side. It's like how many, how many, like guys, supposing this all lasts for 500 years, I don't think it's going to, but suppose this lasted 500 years and so on. And, and you still had terrorist groups trying to destroy Israel and so on. Yes, Allah's, Allah's going to help us. And whoever, you know, the Muhammad hijab is for 500 years from now going, you see, they're trembling. They're trembling. The Jews are trembling. Like, <laughs> does there ever come a point where you realize we're just delusional about this? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> he went with Dr. Phil. That's funny. Uh, look at what Mexico used to own, all the way up to the top of California. But no Mexican is out there chanting from the Rio Grande to Portland, Oregon. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a good point. I mean, he, he this guy actually went around the world and could give more examples. This one he's given like close to home right here because he's he lives in California. He's pointing out, hey, this is all this was all Mexico. This is all Mexico. And it's not anymore. You don't see endless blood baths. We, ah, we have to fight. To, I don't know what to do, man. What? You know, what's, you know, you know what? What always bugs me about um, his show, though, and shows like these is the extreme exaggerated laughter that you hear in response to some some of the jokes uh yeah like yeah i'm like it's it's funny yeah but it's not that funny okay it's not that fu he's making a brilliant <laughs> point but it's not that funny right yeah yeah <laughs> Still good. Because they it's funny that that's what enrages you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we should do that. We should do that after his next joke. Okay. <laughs> Chose a different path. They got real and built a country that's the world's 14th biggest economy now because they knew the United States wasn't going to give back Phoenix any more than Hamas will ever be in Tel Aviv. One See, that's just applause. That's not uh, that's laughing point. at his that's joke. Good point. Good point. Good point. Good point. Good point. Watch that, yeah. Tel Aviv. Plus, hey, Tel Aviv got... was also founded by Jews. So, <laughs> hey, did you up. did you see that thing circulating where a guy was like, "Oh, this is this was Palestine before the Jews came," <laughs> and it's a picture of Tel Aviv. I, I showed that to you yesterday. Yeah. I oh, okay. Yesterday. That, was that on you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, how does no one have the concept of of fact checking or? Like, before I put this out there, let me verify it. One of the leaders of Hamas says, save yourselves time and imaginary dreams. 
In a few years, Allah willing, you will have to discuss the situation in the region after Israel. After Israel. I'm sorry, who's the one with imaginary dreams? If I yeah. <laughs> Save yourselves times and imaginary dreams. In a few years, Allah willing, you will have, you will have to discuss the situation in the region after Israel. Total, like total insane idiotic fantasy land. It, it's so ridiculously stupid. Like I, I was a Muslim. I saw, I, I learned and I heard the very same thing again and again from people all around of like, you know, the day will come, inshallah. They just need to be steadfast. The day will come. Yes, it will finally be taken back. Yes, they will own it again one day. And this just keeps going in ridiculous yeah. ways. And even even when, when the Palestinian, uh, you know, groups are, um, you know, at, at a point where they are exhausted and they just want to settle for things. Like this is one of the, one of, one of the theories and one of the actually, uh, you know, substantiated points as well, that um, during some of the negotiations, especially with, with Yasser Arafat uh, and even Mahmoud Abbas, that um, they wanted to accept certain certain uh, conditions and certain uh, peace agreements, but uh, they couldn't because they were constantly told by the by, by the rival factions and also by other powers and people around the world, no, no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do this. How dare you, how dare you even negotiate with them? How dare you even, you know, try to accept, uh, you know, any form of peace, which does not include taking all of the land and making it all a Muslim Arab land. How dare you even think of, of peace? Like the Muslim Arab world, they don't care. They don't care at all about the about the population there. They don't care at all about the civilians there. For them, they, they, they feel sad and they want to express their sadness when Palestinians die, but they just want the Palestinians to go on and continue fighting and continue dying. They don't want them to have peace because they think it's it's greater than them. We can sit here at home in our warm homes and watch those people in Gaza die and we can say, why is the world watching? But we must make sure that they continue dying and fighting. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking like the, the level of insane delusion here that this guy thinks up oh, in a few years, in a few years, we're we're actually going to control that. I mean, yeah. you know, Bill Maher's given this would be I mean, this would actually be like Mexico saying in a few years, we'll control California. We'll 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 we'll, we'll take over all the you know, all the, we'll take over all that land again. It's like you're no, you're not. You, yeah. You're not powerful enough. You're not even close to being powerful enough. You live in fantasy land. Hey, I just wanted to post this uh, good point up. Uh, Ed Ski seven, I see, Ed Ski seventy says, uh, "What is the most haram food for Muslims? Pregnant pig, because it contains pork. <laughs> <laughs> Double haram. Oh, nice. That's nice. classic. Uh, actually, actually, drunk pregnant pig would be <laughs> <laughs> drunk pregnant pig would be the most haram food. That's um, good. Uh, let's see." Panzer of the Lake says, uh, if Palestinians have the right of return, then why doesn't everyone who's been conquered by Islam have the right to reclaim their land? Yeah, that's something we pointed out a number of times. I mean, Muhammad conquers Medina, runs out the Jews. Uh, he conquers Mecca, forces people to convert. He conquers Arabia, and then they conquer their way west all the way up into Europe. They conquer their way, their way east all the way out to India and China and so on. And somehow, somehow, nope, this is, if it involves Jews, then it's a different situation. It is. Different, completely totally. rules. Totally. Completely different rules. Cool. Cool. Uh, if you were the president of the United States, how would you deal with Islam? Well, AP is foreign born, so he can't be. But if you were born in the United States, like a... I'm, I'm going to change the rules and I will be president. Yeah, cause I'm, I mean, if, if Jenk can do it, then you can. I'd That's rather cool. have you than Jenk. <laughs> <laughs> if AAP, if you were president of the United States, how would you deal with Islam? Um, good question. I don't know. Yeah, I would. Uh, I wouldn't be president to begin with, so it's, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, my main my main issue is, uh, you know, I, I think you that politicians and journalists just need to stop covering for Islam and let people criticize it. And I think Islam uh, will uh, will crumble 
of its own oh, uh, of, it, of its own silliness. But there is a part of me. There, I, I'm just going to be honest. There is a part of me. And you can see this when we do things like eat the, eating the Quran and so on, where we say, okay, these guys are clearly crossing lines. We don't want to get violent, but we want that we we have to make them stop what they're doing here. And we'll do something like eat the Quran or something like that to say, hey, this is not going to go the way you think. Uh, notice we respond without killing and so on in order to stop certain behaviors. So there is a part of me that would do that if I were president of the United States and I would probably like, you know, send in, send in special forces to take the black stone from the Kaaba. <laughs> and then I'd be sitting there, I'd be sitting there posting, Hey, posting videos on YouTube. Hey, president of the United <laughs> States here. Guess who's got your rock. It's actually in pieces, but I'll glue it back together. Guess who's got your rock. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what you guys go one year without a terrorist attack. I'll give you back your rock. <laughs> but See, this is why David Wood cannot become a president. Shouldn't. Please don't. And I'd do be it. like, I'd be like, but every time there's a terrorist, every single terrorist attack, I'm sticking your Blackstone in this uh, vat of pig intestines for the day. <laughs> so notice, I'm not doing that on my own. It's your decisions. Your decisions are are causing this Blackstone to be in this vat of pig intestines. I might do stuff like that. Well, look what you made me do. Look what you <laughs> made me do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Elect me. I was about to say no. I'm a convicted felon, but there's there's no rule a bit against not being a con convicted felon. You can't be really? born in a different country, but you can be a convicted felon. Yes. So yes, I can actually run for president, that and then true. I would pardon myself, <laughs> and That's then good. I would no longer be a convicted felon. <laughs> <laughs> Take a poll. One, she was nine years old. Two, <laughs> I choose cow. <laughs> 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 I guess this is I guess this poll is a I guess this poll is about like what's the what's the coolest <laughs> like what's the most badass cliff here? She was oh, yes. nine years old. I choose the cow. I think she was nine years old. And is no yeah, she she was nine years old is still the best, I think. Yeah, and we <laughs> like that better because you know, at the end of the day, I don't actually I, I think it's hilarious how over the top uh Masab Hassan Yusuf is, and that's that's because you've got a guy who's actually raised as a terrorist who then switches sides but still has a pretty brutal mentality and so on. Yeah, yeah. and we can say well, I just have to choose between one point six billion was I had a cow, I choose the cow. So it's uh, you know it's, it's it's funny to watch, but at the end of the day, I don't you know I don't uh, I don't actually agree with him. Um, same, same. Uh, but it's it's kind of like it's kind of how I feel like when when the Dawa guys start running their mouths, and I'm like, guys, I smash my own dad's head in with a hammer. What do you think I will do to your profit if you keep running your mouth at me? Like seriously, what do you think? Like. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Mean? Can't wait for the Dawa wrestling debut match. Oh, it's not going to be. If you're talking about the hijab fight, that's not going to be a, a wrestling debut match. That's going to be just hijab getting the crap beat out of him <laughs> and tapping like crazy. Oh, I'm tapping. I'm tapping. <laughs> this guy's like, no, no. Please stop it. Please stop. Please. No, because the ref is a friend of mine. He supports Israel. He's not going to call it until your arm is broken. <laughs> yeah, inshallah. Hey, we've got a Christmas Christmas super chat from Snipe there. No comment. But thanks, Snipe. And peace be upon me. Hi, D. Wood, AP. I like Kant and Sartre. What about you? Sartre. No, I definitely don't like... I mean, I like Kant more. Uh, I like the pre-critical Kant. Kant is a, that's a perfect example of, um, his, his philosophy reminds me of a conspiracy theory that once you build it, you can, you can defend that. You can defend your conspiracy theory. You can account for things in terms of your conspiracy. Uh, but Kant's philosophy is like that. It's like, guy's a genius. Guy's a, he's like mad scientist level genius. And he comes up with his philosophy. It's complete. It's wrong. It's wrong. But it is brilliant. That's the that's the general assessment of philosophers, because almost no one agrees with Kant. But they're like, this is brilliant. It's wrong. But man, it's brilliant. 
Yeah. But the pre yeah. the pre critical cunt, I like some of his stuff. So before he did his critical turn and came up with his uh really, really weird philosophy. Yeah, I can't I can't agree with uh with Kant. If you um, if you're Emmanuel <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, right, so uh, I, just <laughs> I, I like I like Sartre uh but um only in terms of the whole existentialism part uh when it comes to other things that some of these people say like morality wise and politically wise it's just complete garbage but yeah that's pretty much it all right let's catch the last rest of this clip here give you the benefit of the doubt and say your plan for a completely jewless palestine isn't that all the jews should die what is the only other option they move you move all the jews okay i gotta warn you there's gonna be some kvetching <laughs> Hey, this is when you're supposed to laugh, Amy. <laughs> hey. Yeah, what? Even that, as he as he's closing out, there, there's not much longer on this clip, but even there, he's making a very important but simple point that the college students and so on don't get. Okay, we're going to assume the best. If you want this, you control it. If you want, if if you want Hamas or whoever to control all the land from the river to the sea. What happens to the Jews? He's saying, even if you, even if we give you the benefit of the doubt and don't think you want to exterminate them, what, how are you going about this? You're going to move them all. You're going to move them all. You, you guys. So Hamas, yeah, you no. guys think you're going to move all the Jews off that land somehow. Really? When they are about a million times more powerful than you. You seriously think that? You know who else uh, tried to, at first, move people before deciding to kill them? The Nazis. Hitler. That's why it's called the final solution, because the first solution didn't work. Mm. So they had to, they they had to thought, come up with a plan B. Yeah, they thought, you know, hey, you know what? This is taking too much time and effort and resources. How about we just kill them? And they thought, huh, interesting. So that's how that happened. Not going to yeah, happen so again. But I mean, notice how, what a simple point that is for, it's basically for the morons, right? For the morons who are oh, from the river to the sea, right? Okay. Tell us what's happening. Tell us what's happening. Are, are they exterminated or are they just moved? Okay. Who's moving them? Are they moving? Are they just deciding, okay, let's decide to move. Or are you going to move them out? If so, how are you going to be powerful enough to move them out? How? How's that going to happen? On what planet is that a thing that could possibly happen? And that's kind of the entire point. You need to be realistic. Everything, everything in the planning here and everything with the, with the college students and everything, it's all delusional. It's all insane and delusional. You could say, hey, don't be more careful dropping bombs. You could say that. You could say that and have that as an actual what, goal. Don't be more careful dropping bombs. Why would you say that? Yeah. So you could say things like, hey, be more careful, or you could aim towards a two state solution or something like that. You could do something that is not absolutely insane. The yeah. people who from the river to the sea, Palestine, you are you are insane or you're, you're just completely ignorant. You don't know what you're calling for. But if you know what you're calling for and you think that is even in the realm of possibility, you're a moron. You're a complete, total idiot because that's not happening. All uh, right. You move all the Jews, and we do this with what? A fleet of trucks called Jew Hall? He's <laughs> 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 Jew Hall. <laughs> Sorry, guys, if you're just tuning in, you didn't see what, what was going on earlier. AP was uh, complaining about uh, the laughter being disproportionate to the <laughs> actual joke. And to where are we moving this entire country? Mm. Texas? <laughs> sure, they have room, and I guess we could put the Wailing Wall on the border and kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> or we could just get serious. Uh, uh, I didn't, I didn't catch it when I first watched it. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, that was, that was a good joke. And then he said, or, or we could just get serious. <laughs> Yeah. And that's that's really the takeaway. Guys, we live in a, a real world, not a fantasy world. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to say, uh, here's the way things were a century ago, two centuries ago, five centuries ago. And we have to go back to that, even though there's no way we're going back to that. It's it's at that yeah. that that time has passed. It's not happening anymore. 
It's, hey, here's the actual situation we're in. How do we move forward? It's very, very simple and yet to somehow totally absent from discussions of uh, the Palestinians. We live in a society. All right. We probably, we probably won't go through much of the Ben Affleck clip. Um, probably just a little bit of it. Let's go through some super chats first. Uh, let's yeah. see. You ready for some super chat? Yes. Muslims take our, land from so many people. From me. Not enough people realize this. I think they take so much land. They have taken a good a good portion of the of the world. Yes. If we want to start giving it back, I would act. Matter of fact, I would actually, I would actually agree to that. If Muslims said, "Hey, we will give back all the land that we've ever taken, and uh, uh, you have to give us back, uh, give us, give the Palestinians control of Israel." I think the Jews could be talked into making that agreement. I had a, I had a, when, when I was over there, I was talking to the IDF guy. He said, he said that the Jews are always willing to negotiate. He said, he said, tell us what the deal is. Tell us what the deal is. He says, he goes, he says, we have a saying, you want Jerusalem? What are you offering? Isn't that great? Like you want Jerusalem? Tell me what you're offering. Tell me what the deal is. If it's a, if it's a great deal, we'll, 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 we'll We'll take it. The deal is you have to uh, you have to allow <laughs> the right of return of every single Palestinian to wherever they want to go and belong. Remove all of the Jewish settlements inside Israel. Basically, turn all of it into Palestine. So yeah, no. Zippy says, "Hey, David and AP, I'm thinking of designing a shirt with a cartoon pig screwing a Quran. Do you two want one?" <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you for the offer. Uh, I think there I think there is a there is a place for uh for that in a in a graphic and I'm sure there are people who uh would be <laughs> would want to would want to wear one. I can't imagine actually wearing that, but uh it's yeah. A, yeah. I I like the thought. Uh, Bill is an old school liberal now considered a Republican. We've talked about that before as well that the the liberals of like the 80s and 90s are now considered like conservatives even if they yeah. just have it if they haven't changed i saw that with roseanne when she was on a talk show this is before this is this is when she got her show back um before she was canceled but she was on some talk show and the guy said what what are you doing like like champ being the champion of conservatives now and stuff and you used to be liberal and she goes i haven't changed on anything she goes i haven't changed on any of my views she goes you guys are the ones who changed the rest of you are the ones who changed yeah, that's pretty much how it is. That is how it is. Uh, <laughs> we love him. This guy's name. He was he was there yesterday too. I choose, <laughs> I choose, the, I choose, cow. I choose the cow. If I if I <laughs> condemn for four to death, then you should be worried. If I have to choose between one point six billion Zyagra buyers and the cow, I choose the cow. <laughs> We don't even have time to break down what all this stuff means for people who just, <laughs> if someone just tunes in and has never been here before, yeah. they don't know who Farfour is. They don't know what I choose the cow means. They don't know about the Ziagra buyers and how this relates to Ali Dawa selling Ziagra and so on. Yeah, it's too much. We're eventually going to get to the point where people can't understand anything that anyone is saying in the chat because we have That's our own language. Endless terrorism because of this verse, Quran 9-11, they fight in the cause of Allah and kill or are killed, ethical or not. Why does life seem uh, cheap to them? Yeah, guys, uh, Surah 9, verse 111, sometimes called the uh, verse of the uh, verse of the barter because it's, hey, Allah has given you the garden. Therefore, this is what he requires in return. You fight in Allah's way. And so you slay and are slain. That's important for uh, some of the other verses in Surah 9, like Surah 9, 29, when... Uh, uh, which says, fight those who do not believe in Allah. And there have been an occasional Muslim apologist who would say, uh, oh, but, you know, fight, that could just be like having a discussion. And uh, Surah 9 itself defines what fighting in Allah's way means, slaying yeah. and getting slain. So you're killing until you get killed. Chloe says, D. Wood, on my Christmas list, can you please give us member emojis? Hmm. Oh, yeah, you should do that. I, I have the emojis from my old channel. I called them emojis because they were all Muhammad. And then AP 
came up with a better name. You called them Momojis, remember? <laughs> so you yeah, start, yeah. You, then you made you made Momojis. I actually, I would prefer, I, guys, can anyone, th let me know in the chat if you guys can think of something for emojis because my apologetics channels also deals with atheism and Christianity. So I don't, I'm not sure I want Muhammad in there because lots of the, lots of the videos have nothing to do with Muhammad now. So, yeah. but I don't know what emojis to use. So if guys have any, matter of fact, don't post it in the chat because uh, I will be much more likely to check the comments later. So po post any ideas you have for uh, custom emojis for channel members in the comment section uh, later. And I, if, if, if people come up with a good idea for some emojis, I can have them made. I can have them made. And that would be a good Christmas, something for Christmas. But we have to come up with a good idea. Dude, they kill... <laughs> Bring them young, peace be upon him. Uh, dude, they killed Far 4. <laughs> they went South Park on it. Uh... What are you guys buying each other for Christmas? We haven't even thought about that because AP is a uh, is a total I, atheist. What Christmas we talking about? I do, I do you suggest Christmas. Hey, how's it work for atheists? You guys still celebrate uh, Christmas? Um, only in different ways, like uh, it worshiping different entities. Uh, no, I mean, like, do you have a Christmas tree and stuff like that? Are you, you gonna have like oh, a Christmas oh, tree yeah, and like presents uh, and stuff like that? Yeah, we actually do. We have a Christmas tree in the house, a very uh, a big one. We have uh, decorations outside and inside. My little, uh, our little three year old son, he just loves playing with those and loves decorating. Yeah, we do. We do. We participate in all this stuff. And yet, it's going to be like they're, they're eventually going to ask some difficult questions. Daddy, AP, <laughs> what's it all mean? What's the meaning of Christmas? We don't know, sir. And you're gonna be like, I don't know. Let me look that up. Let me let me go with this Charlie Brown special. <laughs> oh no, this is completely wrong. This is completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, outsiders. We, we do we do though on, on Christmas on occasion uh, because of our atheist background. We do uh, uh, engage in different things also, which is like, uh, for example, after Christmas celebrations and gift giving and all of that is done. Um, I take out my stash of human flesh and then we eat together. Yeah. Pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. We actually have a ton. I didn't, I didn't look at the number of super chats. There are a bunch of super chats. We are way behind. We're going to have to do these rapid fire. Cause I would like to check out a little bit of this clip from Ben Affleck, just to see how this is aged. Well, <laughs> it's just so dumb. You're like, well, I says I couldn't fill a double A ballpark in West Virginia or something like that. It's like ISIS is, I mean, ISIS was even stopped, but now you have all these ISIS offshoots around the world. It's like, yeah, dude, I think, I think that's a little more built into Islam than you're, than you're aware of. Yeah. But it's, it's a real problem with these guys. They always, oh, it's just such a tiny minority that no one thinks like that. And th it, it, these morons don't, th you are actually helping them. You are actually helping the jihadis by pretending that they're this tiny, uh, tiny minority of extremists. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so you are, you guys are helping get people killed. Will he dilly really shrilly shrilly? Is he illy tranquilly? He milly vanillies to kill Israelis <laughs> All because he willies a frilly Mars bizarre star with cigars and tar char, but he's not far. <laughs> 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 is that gonna go? I wonder, can you do that stuff in chat? Can, I mean, in that like chat GPT, can you say, hey, make me a dope little poem or something like that? You you can, you can. It's also very good, but I'm not sure if this is, if this would be something similar to that. Yeah. D. Wood, what yeah. is your rebuttal to those who say you're violating uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 6.14 by associating with AP? Keep up the good work. I would say actually read the passage. How um, dare you associate with me? Yeah, Paul says How he's not saying he's, Paul says he's not saying just completely separate from unbelievers. He said you'd have to get out of the world. If you look at if you look at the passage, he's talking about when you're associating with people who are leading you into uh, horrible behavior, and that's like what it me. means. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if I ever start uh, sitting around with AP watching porn all day, uh, <laughs> you can apply that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah 
Uh, Hala says, problem, uh, problem there is I, that I saw people saying, well, since Jews were kicked out from so many countries, that means it has to be because of uh, something. So the claim there would be, well, why were all the Jews? Why were all the Jews kicked out of the... Yeah, be, be, it's not... Once Muhammad has marked you as a group to be... Uh, that is the ultimate enemy of Muslims, which is what you have in the Quran. It's Surah 5, verse 82. Uh, the most vehement in hostility towards the believers are the Jews, right? Once that's happened. And then Muhammad has shown you by his example what you do. You expel them from the land. That's exactly what he told his followers to do. And Umar eventually did it. You get a pattern. And so you could say, oh, it's just because of the, notice what you'd be saying here if you were going along with this. People would be saying, ah, the Jews must just really be that bad. And it's not because of, it's not because of Muhammad. It's, it's also a thing, uh, like th throughout human history, um, people always had this whole um, idea of just trying to, of, of going after minorities that are in their societies and trying to somehow blame things on on, the, on minorities whenever something uh, you know strange happens or something doesn't go their way, trying to change the minorities, which is why very often lots of the minorities and, and this is true for you know any society, any culture. This happens around the world all the time. Uh, at some point, something happens. They blame it on certain minorities, and they they try to change them and absorb them and assimilate them into the culture, uh, and, and somehow uh, that way these minorities slowly disappear. Or because they realize, hey, you know what? If we just change our ways and just become part of them, it's going to be easier for us. Um, but the Jews, it was just always very difficult with them to do that because they were always quite resilient in their um, sticking to their own culture and their beliefs. Mm -hmm. So they. They never wanted to adopt that whole thing like uh, change, become what we want you to be, and then you will be okay. They were like, yeah, how about no? Mm -hmm. And uh, Christians also had that, by the way, which uh, during the in the early uh, Roman Empire, for example, which is why they came yeah, out of it. It's the same reason you still have Christian populations in yes. Egypt and Pakistan, despite, you know, centuries of, of persecution and so on. Um, yeah, the Jews have always just been a much smaller group and much easier to target. And, and the thing so, is, people don't like it when there is a, when a group doesn't want to disappear, yeah. doesn't want to change, mm -hmm. doesn't want to adopt your ways. They don't like it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, reminder: thirty percent of all Nobel Prize winners are Jewish, from only a population of thirteen million people. Yeah, and the other seventy percent are Muslims. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm sorry. <laughs> nice. Uh, nope. Yeah, guys, uh, you want to do something fun? Look up, uh, look up Muslims who won Nobel prizes for anything other than a peace prize. Uh, D Woods channel, uh, a peace channel, age restricted, demonetized, sad, atheist. <laughs> D Woods channel, joyful for all ages, nonstop flow of shekels, Christian. Draw your own conclusions. Yep. <laughs> Got a point. Got a point there. Uh, God save the apostate prophet and God bless David Wood every day. Somebody said earlier, because of my comment about uh, that we also eat human flesh on Christmas, somebody said that's horrible behavior. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I can't tell if it's just a... Um, a funny sarcastic reaction to my to my dumb comment or is it you can't or tell take you'll, never, you'll never be able to tell <laughs> i'm not islamophobic i'm not islamophobic i'm a reconquista reconquista enthusiast yeah that makes sense david please give my jizya to a boss state profit <laughs> you shall we'll do a boss state uh, why did Muhammad's wife leave? Because he couldn't bring home the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Since Quran straws make alcohol halal and holy, I'm thinking of patenting the original idea of Quran condoms, Quran-dums, <laughs> holy and halal <laughs> fornication anytime, even with married women. Yeah, I mean, the way these guys uh, try to skirt their own rules is, yes, well, if I, if I have a quran on, then... I'm not actually touching. I'm terrible. It's halal. 
<laughs> he says, uh, I hope Bill talked to Tim Kennedy and Jocko Wilnick before his monologue for security tips. The religion of pieces will Allahu Akbar him into pieces unless he pays the, the gist tax. <laughs> Did I say that right? Yeah, you're close. Close enough. We'll give you a pass this time. But yeah, I'm sure Bill has plenty of security. And he's always he has pointed this out back in the day. Uh, when the topic would come up, he said, whenever we're discussing Islam on a show, we always have to boost security He goes, we don't have to do that with other topic. Why is that? Why? Why do why does everyone understand that you need to increase all of you, all of you uh, liberals and so on? Is, why, why, why is everyone concerned about Islam? It's a religion of peace. Every last one of you understands you need more security if you're talking about Islam. Why? How do you how do you hold those two views in your head? No, it's just like everything else. And it's clearly not like everything else. Yeah. Did you guys see Italy's PM? Europe is tired of Islam. Oh, yeah. I've seen a couple times, a couple things in the past. What, what did she say recently? It's that woman, right? Yeah, uh, Giorgia Meloni. Giorgia Meloni, uh, uh, Prime Minister of Italy. Uh, she said, hey, and I'm a bit and a bit of boobity subtitle. We don't like, like the way pizza. we don't like Islam. Uh, we like uh, the pizza, pizza but we don't like the Islam. Hey. Uh, Mario. <laughs> No, uh, Islam is like a Wario. We're like a Mario. <laughs> what she said is, uh, what did she say? Oh yeah, she gave a, she gave a speech. Um, she was asked about something about Islam or something on her stands on Islam, and she said, um, she said Islam is not compatible with Western culture, with Europe, and um, and then she said Islam, or at least certain interpretations of Islam, uh, are definitely not in alignment with with how we you know experience culture here um a lot of islamic life or a lot of islamic influence here in italy is funded by saudi arabia saudi arabia is a country that has uh, that applies sharia and sharia under sharia um there is stoning for adultery death for uh, apostasy death for homosexuality and many more things and we need to address these things like she, she gave that response it was actually pretty good it's nice to see somebody finally again a prime minister of a of a European nation say these things. It's and good. I and I've been saying this for a long time uh, to the Muslims out there because I would I, at the end of the day I would like to live peacefully with everyone. But Western nations can vote for their leaders, and if you tick off enough people, you're going to get leaders that are that that are not going to be uh, in your favor. Yeah. All you uh, Muhammad Hijabs and Ali Dawas and so on of the world. You can get yeah. leaders very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. Yeah. If you tick off enough people. Yes. Uh, hey, here's a here here's a serious question for you, AP. AP, how is it that Egypt speaks Arabic today? They lost their language and culture. Turkey still speaks Turkish. What in history because... made this difference? Is it narcissism? Is it the narcissism of the Turkish people? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, the difference is actually that that Egypt was very early on conquered by the by the Arabs and was uh, taken over and Arabized, so they didn't have their own have their own. Um, they didn't take over and become a force within Islam. They were conquered. The much of the native population uh, converted to Islam forcibly or because it was the you know easier for them to do or because they didn't want to pay the jizya and all of that much of the the, the remaining population uh the christians they remained but the whole culture was changed it was arabized the same thing didn't happen with turks because the turks they encountered the arab forces while they were um raiding and trying to like the mongols uh conquer and um capture goods and people and all of that on their way they were defeated so they settled but they then arose um certain people among them actually a small population of uh turkic people they uh adopted islam and went out and started fighting for islam and preaching islam and they became quite successful with it especially those known as the 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 august turks and because they they became a leader and a fighter in that in that culture they started to take over and became a major force like the Seljuks who were uh, which which was it the first Turkic Islamic um, Empire which it actually became a leading Islamic force which then turned into the Ottoman Empire 
which became a, a caliphate, took the caliphate from the Arabs and became the first non-Arab ca caliphate. So that that's how, um, that's why the Turks didn't adopt Arab culture because they weren't Arabized. They somehow just, they encountered it, they were defeated, then adopted the religion and they, they started fighting for it. So they're narcissistic, okay. Yeah, yeah, terrible people. Uh, up your food game says question why is the camel called the ship of the desert answer because they're full of arab semen <laughs> you know what's cr what's crazy is here is as disgusting as this joke is if you actually pay attention to articles in some of these countries um there there will be these reports like uh it was discovered that this and you guys you can look this you can look this up these are stories i've actually read there it'll be discovered that um that uh, someone's uh, donkey has a venereal disease and then they'll have to find the local uh, teenage boys who have had sex with the um, with the donkey and it'll be like they'll they'll have like 15 <laughs> teenage boys in the area who all have the same the same venereal disease because they're all having sex with the same donkey and stuff like this it is uh it's pretty it's pretty creepy <laughs> Um, you know, you know, it's really messed up. Uh, I know this is a this is a horrible thing to talk about. And lots of people uh, from those cultures will feel like, why are you telling on us? But uh, <laughs> it's um, when I went to Turkey, and I started living there, I began hearing this, this thing that was completely new to me, as somebody who grew up in Germany, which is that oh, which is this joke, or you know this this knowledge of certain friends or people that you know who back in their uh, in, in their village had sex with a donkey, and I, I, the first time I heard this, I was like, "What? No, this this can't be true. It must be yeah. a joke." Or something. Mm. And then I heard it over and over again, yeah. and then reports of people who actually did it, mm. and of people who like dared each other to do it, and then uh, who know friends who did it, and that that was just one of the main factors that made me uh quite disgusted about the culture that i just landed in yeah i remember when there was the war in iraq the uh soldier u.s soldiers would be uh sharing uh videos using night vision goggles using night vision cameras and stuff like this of like just guys who go out at night and they they uh they bang the the donkeys and stuff like that and stuff yeah. but they're sitting there filming with night so you see you see the the donkey and the guy uh banging the donkey and night vision and stuff like that and anyway it was pretty yeah. pretty uh pretty yep these are the guys who are going to educate us on uh, morality uh swiss apologetic says you guys know the hadith in which muhammad curses a little orphan girl why rarely someone speaks about that that is actually a good question. I've I've planned for many years to make because there's a there are a bunch of those hadiths where Muhammad curses someone, but yeah, he curses the orphan girl and so on, and then uh, people uh, uh, complain to him, "Ah, oh, you cursed the little orphan girl," and he's like, "Yeah, but Allah understands that I lose my temper. He understands that I lose my temper and I call down curses on little orphan girls. So you know it's okay." But Muhammad will actually like say, "Hey, you know, I'm just I'm just a hothead," and so it's like, "Wait a minute, this is this guy is the pattern of conduct." And he can call down curses on people, even on his followers, on orphan girls, and so on. And yeah, Allah does. Allah knows not to take me too seriously in my curses. Wait, this is your pattern of conduct—a hothead who calls down who calls down curses on little orphan girl. So yeah, that that's that's worthy of. It. Matter of fact, we could do we could do a live stream about that sometime and just bring up a bunch of these passages because it does it does show like a problem with Muhammad. So yes, you are you are correct, Swiss apologetics. That should be. That information should be put out there more than it is, than it has been. One of the funniest things to me when I think of uh, Muhammad cursing is that uh, <laughs> the two funny things actually. I was going to make a, I, I think I did make a video a while ago about the things that Muhammad curses people for. But one of them is like um, a, a, a woman comes to him and says, "Ya Rasulullah, my my daughter, she's sick and her hair is falling out. Uh, is it okay for us to uh, to to give her you know artificial?" Um, hair extensions and Muhammad is like Allah curses those who do this and those yeah. who have it done <laughs> yeah <laughs> I made a video I did make a video about that years ago <laughs> or no that was that was so long ago that that might have been an article back when I was posting on answering Islam but I either made a short video or I made a, a blog post I don't remember but I called it 
Muhammad versus Locks of Love, because there is a, <laughs> there's an actual organization, Locks of Love, that goes around uh -huh. getting people to cut their hair and then give it to uh, people who you know going through chemo, kids who are going through chemo or something like that. And Muhammad says it's evil. It's just evil. This, what? Muhammad, the hair's evil. all falling out. And can, can we just like make a wig so the kid's not embarrassed? Ah, you're evil. It'll be a curse of Allah. Be gone for me, you evil you person. Spend Holy. eternity in hell for your... How dare you. Oh, the, the other thing is also he he finds somebody laying on their stomach in the mosque and he goes to them and and, and, and like it's like hey, Allah hates this position, and the guy's like oh, okay no, you're not gonna do it again like really that's what Allah hates yeah <laughs> that's yeah, what's that's, so important yeah that's what he's worried about <laughs> so you can bang a five year old but <laughs> but don't sleep on your stomach yeah, yeah don't do that uh, the cow he picked. Uh, I am the cow, and I approve this message. <laughs> uh, TBN vid shows uh, Hamas Hamastinians. That's funny, Hamastinians. TBN video shows Hamastinians are using baby dolls filled with explosives. Apparently, a woman with a baby was shot by IDF. I wonder if she ran at them. Yeah, don't know. Gosh, baby dolls filled with explosives. That's nuts. And notice the goal of that, right? It would be to make the soldiers extremely wary that anything could be, a, could, could be a bomb, that anything could blow up in their face. And so it make them more antsy and more inclined to shoot first from a distance and thus uh, kill more uh, people who aren't actually Hamas. So Hamas can dial up their, their uh, media campaign. Look what they did. They shot this person. It, it's, it's so uh, stupid. Like the idea of publishes videos of them going into a location and discovering things, including, uh, Discovering traps wherever they go, uh, seeing hidden hidden weapons, stashes, and stuff like that. But whenever they publish something along those lines, like some proof of what they're finding, what Hamas left, uh, mm -hmm. the people are like, oh, how, how do we know that you didn't plant it there? How do we know that you didn't do this? How do we know it's actually Hamas is actually Palestinians? You are a liar. You're lying to us. Like They ask for proof, ask for proof, ask for proof. As soon as they're showing proof, they're like, fake. How do we know it's not you doing this? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the natural disasters happening yeah. in Mecca? Have I you seen have. that? No, I, I haven't. What, 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 what disasters? No, I don't know about that. I, do you remember? Do you remember the video of like the the cockroaches invading? Yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> Creepy stuff. Um, beautiful. No, not familiar with uh, any. If if you're talking about something recent with the natural disasters, yeah, I haven't seen that. To our friend, the far four GPT or MIT must have an AI you could use. Yeah, I think there are, there are alternative a AIs that you could use. And regarding the Green Prince, he has an Eastern viewpoint uh, of embodying Christ consciousness. I choose the cow. Oh, we got another one from the cow that he picked. Uh, Mr. L, the IDF published videos of the tunnel excavation today. You should check it out to show the oh, yeah. true scale of Hamas OP in Gaza, not just uh, apes with AK. Yeah, I was. Did you watch the video of them like going through the tunnel? It's like, gosh. Yeah. And th there was a report on how much that stuff would cost if you uh, if you did that in, in America, for example. It was it's extremely expensive. Yeah, but they uh, had like a two and a half mile. The the big tunnel that they found was like I mean they've got tons and tons of tunnels, but this one's like two and a half miles long. You, I mean that's a nightmare, two and a half yeah. mile long tunnel. And it's it it just brings to mind again this whole thing like but uh, people. People around the world they send money, they say they send funds and all kinds of things to uh, to you know, to to the region. Say, oh, this is to help help the Palestinians, and, you know, help them in their efforts and help them get a better life. They need it. They are in such bad situation, and then Hamas uses those funds to build tunnels. Yeah, you send money but, to uh, them. You send money to them, and that money goes to making the leaders rich and building uh, tunnels to hide in after their terrorist attacks. Yeah, I mean, even if you are, even if you are on the side of Hamas, right? Even if you are on the Palestinian side, how how do you think, how do you think they build those tunnels? Mm -hmm. but how in the world do you think they build those, they they put those tunnels together? It's extremely expensive. The the money, the funds that are spent, the resources that are spent uh, building those tunnels, 
if they were spent for the population or providing shelter or jobs or whatever it is for the population, they would be in a in in much better situations at the moment, and they wouldn't um, have to go out and rape Israelis. Um, I've always been impressed by uh, tunnel building. There was a, there was a, you should look up the battle of the crater at some point. It was awesome. I forget what, gosh, I forget which side was, which, and it was during the American civil war. So during the civil war and you had, uh, you, you, so you had the, the armies in Virginia, they're, uh, they're lined up against each other and, and they couldn't, neither side could, uh, could break through. And then, uh, one of the generals realized he had a, uh, one of the, uh, one of the, whatever it is, uh, groups were, were miners. That's what their, that's what their job was before they enlisted in the army and so on. So he's like, Hey, can you actually like dig up under them? <laughs> They're like, yeah, sure. So they start digging a tunnel. They dig a tunnel up under the other, the opposing army's line, fill it with explosives. Right. And then they come up with a plan. We're going to blow that up. We're going to blow it up right beneath them. And that's going to make a hole in their line. And then we're, our, our soldiers going to march through, right. March through that, march through that hole in their line. So anyway, so they, uh, <laughs> they do it, but they put, they end up putting way too much explosives there. So it blows this massive crater in, but there's so much smoke that, uh, the, the, the army had all their soldiers lined up to, to march through this, but they just fell in this giant hole. <laughs> right? So, so the plan was for, you know, sort of march down into the little dip and then march back up the other side and stuff. And it, and it made a giant crater. They couldn't see. So they all march into this. And then the opposing army, of course, gathers around, just starts shooting all these soldiers sitting down in this in this hole. <laughs> oh so, boy! But it's actually funny. This cool stuff you can do if you can. Uh, if you can. Uh, it sounds funny. It's pretty cool. It sounds pretty funny. Um, so we've got the green prince, and then uh, Obey says Muhammad Hijab is the golden prince. <laughs> <laughs> he sure is. Uh, I got some super shekels from. Uh, my name is Sean. Big rig this week in Muslim logic, Bill. Humans are not good people. Momo was a human, therefore, oh, he's using a, a syllogism here. Humans are not good people. Muhammad was a human, therefore, Muhammad wasn't a good person. Therefore, Bill hates our religion, and every point in the video is wrong. Yeah, pretty much. That makes that makes sense. Yes, Muhammad is good, good, even when he's cursing little orphan girls. His but uh, his but Tahrir in some parts of the world is also known as his but <laughs> That's obviously someone from AP's channel coming over here. Definitely. Theory. Anti-Semitism is rising because you need to reject the Jewish story to believe in the standard oppressed narrative. Anti-Semitism is rising because you need to reject the Jewish story to believe in the standard oppressed narrative. I don't get it. Yeah, I feel like I would get it if my brain weren't fried right now. And the summit is the rise because you, you need to reject the, the Jewish the narrative story narrative. to believe in the standard oppressed narrative. The problem is also when somebody mentions standard narrative, I immediately start thinking of uh, Yasser Qadi and then that comes into yeah, the real standard things. narrative. And I came up with the standard Islamic narrative, which is yeah, yeah. abbreviated as sin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh some guy uh let's see hey what is this what is this weird language is that turkish <laughs> that's turkish <laughs> this is again again the lyrics to a very uh popular turkish song from back in the day you guys have music in uh, turkey no no but s sometimes we do yeah uh what to call a muslim billionaire prophet muhammad <laughs> profit um, yeah. you two are doing great have a great stream yes we are we are doing we are doing a great job just yeah. refuting yeah. thus refuting bill maher's claim that human beings uh, suck can you can you guys go to israel and the west bank together yes we could i would definitely go to israel i don't think i would want to go to the west bank too. i don't know you could i've been to the west bank you could go there you, yeah, you, pro want... you, you probably want to be a little bit disguised. Yeah, I don't, don't want to go. recognize you. Oh, I you're going, go. buddy. You're going. I want to go to West Bank. Hey, we have more uh, Turkish here for you. This one's about you specifically. Ridvan 
Hey, I can even I can even read this. It says Rid Van, you atheist. <laughs> and then he says far four in there. So I see this. Uh what is this? <laughs> it says Rid Van, you atheist, uh beautiful creature or beautiful per, uh whatever. Uh dance for me like far four. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> That's actually funny. <laughs> uh, Chloe here says, uh, co-host Ash with James Whale, smashed ambassador. Go watch Shiny Luke video. Gazans are spitting on body. He said to the guy who didn't condemn October 7th. Yeah. Who, who said that? James Whale. J James Whale. I've been seeing that. I've been, I've been seeing that uh, on Twitter. I have no idea who that is. But I've James been seeing Whale. the James Whale thing. Oh, that's isn't that Talk TV? The guy I, I saw a clip of him. I don't know who that is, but I saw Talk TV clip of with that with that guy. I don't know. Hmm. I am here with the meow, uh, Chloe. But mm. pro Palestinians don't think like that. Jesus needs to give them more brain cells. Pray for the smooth brains. Uh, yeah, it's it's. And that's that's what sucks. Like, if the entire world was telling them, guys, get over it, get over it, and stop promoting terrorism and work towards getting you know your own state and not trying to exterminate Israel, like they might go for it. It's it, the problem is the entire world kind of cheers them on, right? You, you've got college students cheering them on. You've got the uh, the Dawa guys cheering them on. And they think, oh, if, if, if this many people are agreeing with us, we can actually do it. No, you can't. No, you can't. Those college students, those college students are not helping you. They're, they're hurting you because they're giving you hope. They're somehow making you think that you can actually defeat a massively more powerful uh, nation. That is real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your Israeli agency handler says, "Good job, keep it going. It's good. We like uh, we like all the all the messages. Let's see. Love you both. Watch David and Gang for ten years. Hate the tequila they spew and the woke idiots following them, but they don't fool me because I'm an ex Muslim. Wait, he just, he just he said, watched David and Gang for ten years. Hate the tequila they spew and the woke idiots following them. So see." He, he's saying that you 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 do takia, and woke idiots are following you. Mm. That's what it says. Um, regarding the deaths of women and kids, Israel should say we honor Prophet Muhammad's teaching in Sahih Muslim seventeen forty five that they are of them. It's sure to disagree. Yeah, we wouldn't want Israel actually using that as a defense, but that should be pointed out. Like Muhammad was a Muhammad was entirely comfortable with killing women and children if they are not the main targets and they're killed as collateral damage. Mahmoud. Uh, let's see. And then we'll watch, uh, take another super chat or two and then we'll, uh, cause there's a bunch. Why is that? What's going on today? What is special about, is it cause Christmas is coming up? I'm wondering why there's, everyone's on here. It's, it's a good topic and it's Christmas. Okay. So it's a combination of factors, but yeah, we'll watch a little bit of this, uh, Belmar and super, the super genius Ben Affleck. Uh, I needed to split my shekels between you both, but D Wood gets more. Oh, so this is probably on the uh, as far as the channel memberships that Chloe right. gifted. I needed to split my shekels between you both, but D Wood gets more for being Christian. <laughs> Once you become Christian, How dare you, you? you get more of see? my shekels. Looking forward to that. It's just like uh, it's just you like see this uh, is discrimination. Yeah, it's like Eli saying that he gives you one ninety nine ninety nine and not the extra penny. See, this is racism. It's discrimination. <laughs> AP's being oppressed, everyone. Yeah. Bill Maher is so on point. I know. That, again, that's why I wanted to. I had some other topics I wanted to cover, but uh, we were like, oh, man, we got to cover that because it was awesome. And my name is Sean. In 7th century Arabia lived a horny Arab fella. Muhammad was his <laughs> name. And the Quran he proclaimed while smoking some Quran. Kush, he grabbed nine-year-old Aisha's tush. <laughs> Yeah. To admit God's not with them is to say Islam is false. Oh, yeah, that is the problem. We pointed out, like, at what point do you realize, hey, God is not helping you defeat these Jews here? 
And the correct answer would be never, because yeah, that would make you that would you would start doubting Islam. Um, hmm. They are hanging pro-Palestine papers in a city near me. Why is this propaganda hanging in American cities? Because there are lots of stupid people in the world. A lot of stupid people. And of... we in the lots of especially young people, but everyone in the West have been conditioned over a period of many years to just accept your daily marching orders. And you could just say, hey, here's the thing. So you get the message on Twitter in the morning. This is what you're supposed to be enraged about today. And if you don't, if you don't get enraged about this, then you're you're bad and you're no longer part of our group. So everyone's been That's programmed with that be. now. That's exactly how it should be. Uh, free Persia, freedom with dancing. Please over, uh, please cover this story. Sade so. Boogie, Free Persia. Yeah, we should be, and I've done it. I've done it periodically, saying Free Mecca and stuff like that. And uh, but yeah, it is a ongoing problem. It, Golden Shower. There's a lot of uh, stuff in in Iran. Um, Iran rebellions, again protests, attempts to uh, free it from Islamic mm -hmm. oppression, and all of that. Uh, still ongoing, still a lot of protests and all of that still still happening. Uh, I, think, I think that one's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to. I think forever. the Iranian regime is going to collapse at some point. Just hope they it will. happens they sooner will. rather than later. Inshallah. Uh, it, it's like Putin saying, "We will take Alaska back." Yes, it is. <laughs> Give us Alaska back. They, they stole Alaska from us. Now we paid you for it. And so what? You can't just buy stuff. Hamas is taking window shopping to new levels. Hey, wait a second. I, I wanted to look up it, if there is any recent, uh, any any such absurd comments on Alaska. And I'm seeing December 9th, uh, Putin ally hints at Russian plot to reclaim Alaska in the face of uh, weakened U.S. government. What? Ah, oh, man. All right, let's watch a little of this clip. <laughs> What's wrong with you? So the other thing we want to talk about, of course, is that you and I have been trying to make the case, I think, I have anyway, that liberals need to stand up for liberal principles. This is what I said on last week's show. Obviously, I got a lot of hate for it. But all I'm saying is that liberal principles like freedom of speech, freedom to practice any religion you want without fear of violence, mm. freedom to leave a religion, equality for women, isn't that it's so commonsensical right hey we're liberals notice he's talking to liberals and it's funny because the liberals who are with him are going to lose their minds ben affleck how dare you and it's hey guys we're liberals but we keep defending this thing that is the opposite of everything we believe in why are we doing that that is stupid we should not be doing that and it's like yeah. the worst thing anyone could say and it's racist to point yeah. out the absurdity Absolutely. Equality for minorities, including homosexuals. These are liberal principles that liberals Woo! applaud for. But then when you say in the Muslim world, this is what's lacking, then they get upset. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> like, hey, these are our values if we're talking about this group. These are our values if we're talking about this group. These are our values if we're talking about that group. These are our values that we support in the US. These are our values that we support in Europe. These are our values. That, hey, should we support those values uh, in the Muslim world? No, how dare you, you oh, racist. Oh, how dare you, you racist. You? You're being a racist. <laughs> Pretty much. It should be the least controversial thing in the world. And it's the most controversial thing you can say as a as a as a liberal. It's just nuts, man. Yeah, well, liberals have really failed on the topic of theocracy. They, they, they'll they'll nope. criticize failed white everything. theocracy. They'll criticize right. Christians. <laughs> they'll still get agitated over the abortion clinic bombing that happened in 1984. But when <laughs> when you want to, <laughs> he's brilliant, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. exactly. Hey guys, I just for for those who want to say no, Sam Harris is is wrong and stupid about this other thing. Yeah, he reminds me of Bill Maher in that sense that he could be like, "How are you this right over here and this stupid on this other topic?" Um, but yes, for some for some reason, just very, it's 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 something that should be completely commonsensical. It must it must just be they have some part of their brain that makes them 
somewhat immune to a certain kind of manipulation that influences most other people and they just don't fall for it. And they're able to see clearly on this issue. Wait, if we're if this is our list of values, then Islam is the opposite of that. Why in the name of common sense would we would we be supporting Islam? Whereas everyone else is just told, here is our list of, of values and support Islam anyway, no matter what. Yeah. Talk about the treatment of women and homosexuals and free thinkers and, and public intellectuals in the Muslim world. Uh, I would argue that li liberals have failed us. And uh -huh. uh, the crucial point of confusion, uh, yeah. Hey, yay, woohoo! Got the audience full of liberals saying, yeah, liberals suck when it comes to Islam and we get insanely stupid. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. God you're here. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> did, you, did you hear Ben? What did he say? He said, thank God you're here, <laughs> like sarcastically. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that messed up. So he's like, hey, we've we failed, we failed, uh, we failed. Liberals have failed when it comes to Islam and Ben Affleck possibly roided out. I do not know that that is the case. He could have just been totally uh, totally enraged for some other reason. But it, it is plausible, Joe Rogan's theory, that he's actually roided up to play Batman at this point, And he's in a roid rage. But uh, thank God you're here. <laughs> <laughs> pay, pay attention to what's happening at, uh, up until this point here. They're not even talking about, uh, you know, Islam in the West or, you know, opposing Islamization. They're not talking about any of these 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 rather controversial things. They are talking about um, the rights of people in the Muslim world, like the, the rights of minorities, the rights of gay people, the rights of women, the rights of others in the Muslim world. It should be completely normal for you to agree that you should stand up for them because they they, they need uh they probably need your help and your solidarity but at, at this point to be outraged that's just ridiculous uh yeah i know it, like that's what i mean it's like how is how is this not just completely obvious like of course. I mean, even the audience is like, yes, w good point. Like, hey, we're a bunch of liberals here, and we realize we've been really stupid in defending terrorism and, and uh, Islamic abuse of women. And uh, I mean, gosh, they, they still have the, the death penalty for, for being gay, and you persecute religious minorities. How are we defending this? It is the exact opposite of everything we say we stand for. How is it even controversial to say we've failed if we are, if we are defending Islam? Really, really. Hey, what is this? <laughs> Chloe, Chloe asked from earlier, you're a felon? D. Wood, that surprises me. Please explain. Chloe, where have you been? <laughs> Chloe, where have you been if you don't know that I'm a, I'm a felon? Hey, check out. Uh, yeah, we're, we won't go through that right now. But check out my video on my channel. Um, how God destroyed my atheism. Uh, to, you get the whole story there in pretty awesome fashion. I don't mean to brag, but awesome video. And mm. Annie Poo Poo says, uh, actually, I'd say this is the best campaign platform ever. David Wood, 2028. Please pull the audience. I'm sure I'm not alone. Get on board, AP. Yeah, I wonder yes. if you could. I wonder if you. Could, I wonder if you could be vice president if I ran for president. We should do that, just as a joke. I don't actually want to. I don't actually want to lead. I would. I mean, let's see. I would do it just because I would like to take the uh, take the black stone and do my uh, pig intestines trick. But other than that, I would not want to be any sort of political leader ever. I'd rather no. do what I'm doing here. President or vice president must be a natural born citizen. Huh. Sorry. Hey, hey, look, she was nine years old, says I challenge. She was the she she was nine years old guy ch says I challenge. I choose cow to a wrestling match. <laughs> <laughs> How did this become the big battle of our time? <laughs> I choose the cow versus she was nine years old. Hey, I'll it tell makes you. sense. Hey, could you could you could you imagine if they actually had a wrestling match and then uh, uh, I choose the cow would be like, do you think that was a good move? It was the perfect move. <laughs> Let's get back to the, the, the crucial point of confusion is Let that that we have been sold this meme of Islamophobia where every criticism of the doctrine of Islam gets conflated with bigotry mm -hmm. toward Muslims as people. Right. And that is uh, it's, it's intellectually ridiculous. Well, look, you, can he you can hear the crowd getting it. They're, they're getting it because it should be obvious to everyone. When someone says, hey, 
uh, look, you can you can beat your wives into submission. You can marry child brides and stuff. We should be standing against that. And some, oh, you're just racist against brown people. You're like, oh, that's stupid. You shouldn't be falling for that. The crowd sees it. And then Ben Affleck, the uh, champion of that, that's racist, is about to jump in and do exactly what Ben is, what uh, what Sam here is pointing out is insanely yeah. stupid. So hold on, are race. you the person who understands the officially caught? Here we go. This is, I just wanted to see this. Watch. He pulls this, uh, I mean, it happens every time. What are your qualifications? It's what we just saw from Dilly, Hus Dilly Hussein last night on AP's channel. Here we go. It's what intellectually... Ridiculous. So even it gets so hold on. Are racism. you the person who understands the officially codified doctrine of Islam? You're uh, actually, yes, he is. Isn't that nuts, though? Like, <laughs> I mean, think about this, guys. We're liberals. We say that these are our values. Islam teaches the exact opposite of those values. And we defend Islam because we've been programmed, we've been relentlessly programmed and conditioned to think of any criticism of Islamic values as something to do with racism. And it's just because you know, the only people who say that uh, that these things are wrong in the Muslim world are racists. We've been programmed that and we need to stop. We need to actually defend the values that we say we we believe in. And are you, do you uh, are you the Grand Mufti? Are you the Grand Mufti? I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm, you're talking to Batman. How dare you? It's the exact same thing. And, we, and uh, for anyone who came in late, I mentioned this uh, much earlier, but this is what you see. Any random politician who knows absolutely nothing about Islam, any journalist who knows absolutely nothing about Islam, has they've all felt for years that they can say what is and is not Islamic. To, the, to such an extent, they'll say, ah, these guys are not real Muslims because they're doing this, even though those of us who study Islam know that what, they're, what those guys are doing is exactly what Islam teaches. But you'll have politicians and journalists, no, those aren't real Muslims because they're doing this thing that is commanded in the Quran. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and yet, if you criticize anything, well, how, are you an expert on Sharia? Did you go to Al-Azhar? Hmm? Are you the Grand Mufti? Hmm? Then you have to shut up. Why? Why is how is that a rule? How how do you need to be the a world renowned expert to say mm, Muhammad says right here you can beat your wife into submission? That's bad. Why do you need to be a scholar to say that? I don't know. I haven't been able to figure out. It really, really looks like it's just a simple way to sh to silence to to attempt to silence someone. Just so, oh, are you a scholar? Up, oh, can't listen to you. Can't listen to you. You're not an expert on that in that field. I. I being able to read or think is pretty much all the ability you need to accurately criticize Islam. What, what, that, so you well, can say, well, I, this I'm, is, I'm I actually, think any, I'm actually well educated on this topic. I'm, I'm asking you, so I mean, you're you, saying if I criticize that, you're saying that Islamophobia is not a real thing, that if you're critical of something, <laughs> wait, what? It, What's wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Who, who said that? I mean, yeah, and 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 Sam is going to respond. I'm, no, you. There are people who hate Muslims. Just, there are people who hate Arabs. There are people who who don't like Muslims just because they're Muslims and want to. Uh, yes, there are there are people, and not saying that doesn't exist. That's not what's happening. If I say, "Hey, beating your wife into submission is is bad," it's not what's happening. Yeah. What a dope, man! What a dope. Real thing when we do it, right? <laughs> well, well, no, it no, really no, isn't. I, I'm not denying not, that, that certain people are bigoted against Muslims as people, that's, right. and that's a that's problem. Big of you. But the. But why did you, you hear him? He goes, that's big look, of you. Look at, look look at look. that response, man. Like, that's, why big are of, you even that's big of you. <laughs> that's big of you. Oh, God. Shut up. About this it's, it's gross. It's racist. It's, it's not. It's, but it's He's so instantly going, it's gross. It's racist. Oh, my goodness. That's man. that moment. Oh, God. This is. I'm Matt Damon. He should have had Matt on there with him. I'm Matt Damon. So it's like saying those so not your shifty Jew. You're not listening Absolutely to not. what well, we are saying. You guys are saying, if you want to be liberals, believe in liberal principles, right. like freedom of speech, like, right. um, you know, we are endowed by our uh, forefathers with an inalienable life, like all men are created. No, equal. Ben, we have to be able to criticize bad ideas. And of course we do. Islam no, no. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Let me back this up, because this is like the classic the ultimate classic line from uh, Sam Harris. Here we go. 
all men are created no. equal. Ben, we have to be able to criticize bad ideas. And of course we do. Islam, no liberal doesn't okay, want to okay. criticize bad ideas. But Islam but why when... is the mother load of bad ideas. Oh, Jesus. So we have it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Bill Maher there. It's like, exactly. That was just an issue. Of course. Watch watch Bill Maher. It's awesome. His little his little reaction there just puts his arms up in the air. Freedom of speech. Like, right. um, you know, we are endowed by our uh, forefathers with an inalienable aspect. All men are created no. equal. Ben, we have to be able to criticize bad ideas. And of course we do. Islam, no liberal doesn't okay, want to okay. criticize bad ideas. But Islam but why when... is the mother load of bad ideas. Look at Bill. Jesus. So we have, we have bad ideas. Just a... Bill's like, it's so easy. How, how hard is this? It's so simple. What's your problem here? Are you stupid? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and then, and then I, what? I, it's it's probably not always uh, the most diplomatic way to respond to somebody who is so outraged like Ben Affleck. But uh, the fact that Sam Harris uh, here just uh, responds with such a harsh fact here, which is like uh, this guy is already outraged that you're that you're speaking so critically of Islam and yeah. uh, Muslim culture, <laughs> and he's like, no, it, it's 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 not just a bad idea; it's the mother load. It's the mother load ideas. of bad ideas. <laughs> And I wonder if he's just like, hey, I got to go ahead and say this. Or he's like, Ben Affleck looks like he's about to explode and I'm going to enrage him even more just so he looks like a, like a, <laughs> looks like a ball of whiny emotion even more. Uh, let me back this up. Watch out. So Sam says Islam is the mother load of bad ideas. Bill Maher gives us, yeah, finally, someone said it. So easy. How hard is this to understand? Now, let's see uh, Ben's reaction here. Size bad ideas. And of course we Islam, do. No liberal doesn't okay, want to okay. criticize bad ideas. But Islam but why at this moment when, is the mother load of bad ideas. Jesus. So we have it. We have that's ideas just a like, fact. like blasphemy. That's not a, it's not a, it is it's a, an ugly thing. It is it it's such a basic liberal. But, well, let me unpack it. Tolerance. Let me, yeah, let, exactly. let me unpack but it. But not bit. for intolerance. No, of course it's not. But the. <laughs> <laughs> it just cracks me up. It's Ben. What? First of all, what in the name of what? Is, what is Ben Affleck doing on this show? Uh, what no, is he doing why is, why is he talking? Uh, so too often, uh, celebrities that became famous for completely different reasons try to talk about things that they shouldn't be talking about. Like, wh yeah. why? Why is this guy talking about this at all? Yeah, and I think Ben, because you know, you do want to be careful, and w your goal, if you're a liberal, should be, hey. Let's keep the issues clear that we have a problem with bad ideas. And we want to confront these ideas without making sure without without making people uh, hate Muslims in general and despise Muslims or something like that. That's what you should be. That's and that's all you should do. If you don't know what you're talking about, which Ben Affleck doesn't, that should be the goal. Hey, guys, let's just keep it clear that we're talking about the realm of ideas and that there are people who um, who are acting on those bad ideas and we need to confront those people. But this doesn't mean that you just hate all Muslims or something like that. That's That should be the goal. That should be the goal. And they would have all agreed on that. Instead of, how dare you? You're racist. You're being racist. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> fine. Fine. Batman is canceled. I'm canceling Batman because you're so evil. <laughs> what a big baby. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yati says, the white robes and shaving head at the Kaaba is pure Hinduism. The black stone is literally a Hindu Shiva lingam. People <clears throat> don't know about Hindi presence in pre-Islam Arabia. There's more to this. I've seen that. I've never seen the I've never seen the evidence that this is actually no, I'm not saying there's not. I've just never looked into it, but I've seen that there was Hindu influence there. And so, but I'm wondering, it would kind of make sense if. There, there are problems with saying that Islam, I mean, that uh, that Mecca was this hub of trade and so on. It's not on the trade maps and so on. But um, there was lots of, you know, sp there was spice trading and so on going around. But, you know, lots of that was from Yemen. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the inf what the level of it is. No, I, I, would, I would say I, I, I would I would contest that immediately and say that there is, first off, there is no evidence for, for that at all. Wrong. Uh, secondly. Um, Wrong. <laughs> Secondly, the whole uh, the, the the stone, the black stone, it, it doesn't have to be a, a a Shiva lingam or anything like that. Um, people often act like, uh, especially like no fans, but from Hindu background, often act like Hinduism has a monopoly on uh, you know world polytheistic religions and their cultures and influences and, and all that. But uh, that's not really the case. Stone worship and using stones during worship. Uh, using stones to somehow identify their 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 gods and all of that, it it was a common thing in pre uh, 
you know, in, 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 in Middle Eastern, even Semitic cultures, it is, it is very well known that that was a thing. And uh, the fact that, that the Arabs also had such a practice um, is not very surprising. It's probably not connected to Hinduism or anything like that. It is just something that cultures that do not just come from one source, which is India, but cultures independently developed or just, you know, traded and gave to each other. They also had this practice of having cube shaped buildings in Arabia and in Persia and slowly in other places. They didn't adopt all of these things from Hinduism. They just uh, developed them separately. So yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that there's any origin to that at all. So yeah, I'm like a ape. I would need to see some good evidence of that and not just, hey, well, you know, they had a stone and they had this cube and we see that same thing uh, in other areas. We'd have to see some actual evidence of uh, borrowing there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dimitrios says, hey guys, just wanted to ask you if you had a chance to see the video I sent to AP. Would love your take on it. Maybe you can make a video reacting to the lecture. I saved it, but I didn't look at it yet, unfortunately. Well, yeah, why, are you being a, why are you being a jerk? It could be something important. We get lots of our we get lots of our good points from people pointing stuff out to us. I don't like to look at important things. <laughs> Far four says, "He he he, Jewel Hall to Texas, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> 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 yeah. guys that's far for the mouse uh uh appreciating um bill mars <laughs> point earlier uh chloe says i've been informed d wood i had dark thoughts as a kid fights with dad and grandpa and mom got close to acting on it lucky i didn't as a young adult wanted to be like joker psycho now i found jesus yep see ap look see that you know i don't believe in jesus but look yeah, what the impact Jesus has? Mm -hmm. Could you, you imagine see. if Chloe had just said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow an atheist like Jeffrey Dahmer"? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the land around the Mediterranean Sea, Rome will be free. Inshallah. I choose. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, that was all the Roman Empire back in the day. Got to give it back. I choose the cow wants to can. <laughs> Far four. I choose the cow wants to condemn me. I'm going to make sure he keeps them leather straps shut. He is slippery. He will be vibrated. <laughs> this is another example where if someone doesn't know <laughs> all these little things that we, <laughs> if they don't know our little <laughs> language, they won't understand any of the <laughs> leather straps, yeah. slippery, vibrated, far four. I choose the cow. None of that will make sense to a, a random person yeah. coming into this live stream. This man is most slippery. Yeah. De debate Ali Dawa, but you won't. You would be trembled. Actually, you did, and it, you you did get a debate set up with uh, Ali Dawa, and he started munching on grapes. Yeah, Ooh, look, I'm eating the grapes. Yeah, look, I mm, I got I got this guy feeding me grapes. Yeah. It's also it's so ridiculous. Like um, he challenged me to debate him in person, to, and he, because he he thought I would not accept it. Because back in the day when we were talking with him on the job about debating, I said no, I'm not doing in person debate with you. I'm going to do it online. Uh, let's let's do this. So I, I guess because of that background, he didn't ex expect me to actually accept it. He challenged me to an in person debate, and I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he and then and then he tried to change it. Like uh, okay, yeah, no. Uh, Okay, I, I will come to America. Okay, you have to come to this city, not not to that city, not not that city. Actually, I can't come to America. Uh, I will come to Mexico. Let's do the debate in Mexico. What in the world is yeah. this? Eventually, he had to take it to uh, doing it online and doing a curse fest yeah. instead. And by the way, <laughs> notice it's the exact same thing hijab does with with fighting, right? It's oh, you fight me, you come here, and you. That's the first thing the guy did. The guy said, "I'll fight you," and he's like, "Oh, will you come to the UK to fight here?" Because the guy's in Israel, <laughs> and he's like, "Sure, and sure, let's set it up." <laughs> so it's just, it's just a. Uh, we should take bets on how Muhammad Hijab is going to back out of this. Like, what are all the possible ways that he can back out of this while saving face and making it seem like he's not backing out? Uh, but yeah, yeah the. Uh, uh, so, I mean, at least hijab has been in debates. Um, Daniel Hakikachu actually has done like like formal debates 
Uh, mm-hmm. Sheikh Uthman will only debate if it's like in his corner surrounded by his people. He won't do an actual formal debate like on a yeah. stage yeah. or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. But Ali Dawa, I mean, I, I can't imagine that guy doing a formal debate. And I don't, I don't think he ever I don't think he ever will. I've never seen him do it. I don't think he ever will. I think he's a total coward. And I think he knows I think he knows how stupid his ideas are and how they would be destroyed. Imagine uh, Ali Dawa being in, a, in an actual formal debate. That's just no, it's not going to happen. Yeah, not gonna happen. Uh, she was nine years old. Says we need an AP and D Wood lore explained stream. We need like a list where anyone who's new comes along. We just say, hey, go over, go over to the, look at this document or look at this post or something like that. I guess I could have like a community post somewhere and just share the link, or maybe even might even need to just repost the list in the description of every live stream. Here's what leather straps of the anus means. Here's what, <laughs> here's who far four is. Here's <laughs> uh oh, we, should, we should have a thing like we should have a like everyone who comes here first has to go and look at that list and before they can make comments yeah. yeah uh amber amber black says david you can vote or own a gun no i cannot you do either i think i could if i applied for them get my rights to vote back i just don't care enough to do that so hold, hold on hold on hold on you, you can run for president but you can't vote that's what's funny and that's why i need to run for president it's the only way i can get i can pardon myself and get my right to own a gun <laughs> that's so stupid yeah uh the the gun part yeah so you you can be a convicted violent felon and get your right to vote back they will not give me a right to own a gun back. Uh, and and to be fair, I understand it. I, under, I understand the rule. Hey, this guy has been violent and therefore can't have a gun. Just kind of sucks when you get jihadis around the world saying they're going to brutally slaughter me and my entire family. And so, you know, I'll be sitting here like this. Oh, come get me. Come get me. I've got these pliers. I've got this Gerber. <laughs> Fortunately, I got these guns, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway. Yeah. How about Quran toilet paper? Yeah, well, someone's someone's got to print it up and market it. As you said yesterday, atheists wish for divine justice. Come to Jesus, AP. I believe your good deeds will be rewarded with a chance to see him at the end. He will help you release your anger like he helped me. Inshallah. Hey, hey Chloe, why do you keep... <laughs> like, I get what Chloe's saying. Hey, AP, come to Jesus and stuff, but she's... She... <laughs> <laughs> she, she seems to think that you're I don't think of you as angry as an angry person but she's telling you he all. can help you he can help you get rid of your anger not too much just like you don't, you don't you don't seem to like you occasionally you seem to be appropriately enraged at certain things like I normally say and it's like okay yes it is appropriate to be angry at that yeah I I do uh sometimes get uncontrollably angry when I am confronted with certain situations it's usually Um, it's usually messed up stuff and then you'll start ranting yeah yeah you often see that it's like actually you know what uh the most angry that i am throughout my especially over the last years is during some of the live streams that we have that that's that's the most angry that i that i get when i react to some really messed up things here Mm -hmm. otherwise i'm I'm not really that that angry of a person (laughs) Yeah, you seem yeah you don't you seem pretty laid back on most things until something yeah. that is deserving of rage comes up. Yeah. Um, yeah. If the cho- ooh here's an actually good question: If the choice came down to 1.6 billion Muslims actually conquering the world and a cow, what would you guys choose? <laughs> yeah, I go with I go with if it's that if it's co- <laughs> see the way the way Masab put it, it's like hey if I have to choose between uh, uh, 1.6 billion Muslims or a cow. It sounds like he's saying dying or something like that. He would rather the, the save the cow or something like that. If you're talking about conquering the world, yeah, I take the cow all, all day long. I don't know. It's a difficult decision to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. How can anyone move the Jews when God has already given the Holy Land to them? Yeah, I pointed out before, I'm not even... I don't. I don't even think of Israel in in the terms of like I'm not when I'm thinking about the issue. I'm not thinking of any sort of divine right to the land and does this group or that group have divine rights? And some people, lots of people do. Even lots of Christians do. Because um, you need. I'm, I'm just. Th- I'm just thinking. Okay, there, there's a uh, right now. Israel is a country, and there's a bunch of terrorists, and there's a bunch of uh, people around them who want to exterminate them and 
yet I would trust uh, the I would trust Israel with that land way more than I would trust Hamas or something like that. And so, I mean, that's I'm thinking in terms of I'm thinking of in ter- of terms in hum- of of human rights and who is best likely to uh, preserve that and so on. Because you're an atheist. Uh, let's see. Is Judaism a cult of those who didn't believe in the fulfillment of the Old Testament? The faithful Judeans believed in Jesus. Um, Judaism, a cult of those who didn't believe in the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Um, yeah, I don't know if I describe it. I don't know if I describe it that way. Um, there were there were modifications in Judaism which were a reaction to Christianity. Like we, we did a live stream. You can check it out if you haven't already. I did a live stream with uh, uh, Anthony Rogers and, and he pointed out that if you go back to, you know, the time of Jesus, it was pretty common to believe that there was some sort of plurality within the nature of God because of passages in the Old Testament and because of their commentaries and so on. And they would talk, it was very... It's very common to talk about God and the word of God as like divine and somehow personal and the spirit of God as divine and somehow personal and so on. This is all very common. And later, later Judaism sort of went into a Unitarian mode to to set itself uh, more distant from um, from from Christianity and so on. But I don't I don't know. You, 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 You still have a. You have a big spectrum within within Judaism now. Uh, yeah. So, indeed. Let's see. Uh, Jesus GPT facing a situation where Hamas desire harm. Remember wisdom and love central to my teachings. Prioritize safety of innocence. Necessity for authorities to act. Romans thirteen. It is a servant of God and avenger. Who? What is this? Is this something you actually put into? Is there a Jesus yeah, GPT? To- I forgot to look that up. She she told us about that on the last um, on our last live stream, and I said I would look it up because she said there is actually a Jesus GPT. A G- oh, the, yeah, you, you can talk to. Yeah, we should make a oh, video. Yeah. We should we should just do that during a live stream and start interacting with it and asking questions and stuff. I just opened it right now. I'm looking at it. Huh. That's interesting. We should do that in a live stream. Yeah, uh, Christmas tree. You see, he was never a real atheist. <laughs> <laughs> He's pointed out you're not a real atheist because you had a Christmas tree. Yeah. Uh, Chloe says, oh, this is continuing from the Jesus GPT. An avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil Romans, uh, where hostages are at stake, priority is their safe recovery. I guess that's the response that Chloe was getting from the Jesus GPT. See, White Lily says, watching you two is basically my therapy since real therapy is expensive. Paying Jizzy is cheaper. David is technically a doctor after all. Let's see, I love New York. My brothers and sisters, uh, Palestinian people, get rid of terrorist Hamas and live in peace with your neighbor, David Wood, and the apostate prophet. Love from Ethiopia. Yeah, and guys, notice it's actually simple. Bill Maher was pointing out like how simple this is to understand, but the actual solution, people of Palestine, just stop one realize you're not going to conquer Israel. That's insane and delusional. You're not going to do it. And so two, with that, with that understanding that you are not going to control the land, the land from the river to the sea, but you can have some of it. If you go long enough without uh, supporting terrorism, you can have your own state. That should be your goal. Why is that not a thing? Why is that not the thing? Why is that not the goal of, of all of you? I don't know. This is, well, this I, is I very do fascinating, know. actually. I, I just tested uh, a little bit of it and uh, asked a few questions like uh, what I should be doing. And then I, I, I mentioned uh, a great act of violence uh, that occurred and what should be done. And it actually gave me like responses um, that sound like the way Jesus would respond in the Bible. And where it says... Take, uh, take these into consideration that like seek justice, not revenge, pray for healing and peace, uh, things like this. I, it, it's, it's very, it's a very interesting. We need a project. Muhammad, <laughs> we need a Muhammad GPT. <laughs> yeah. Kill yeah. them all. Kill them all. Yeah. Kill them all. Every, like every, every response, <laughs> I kill you. <laughs> I curse you. I curse that orphan girl. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. 
<laughs> this is from the Nobel Prize earlier. Muhammad won the Nobel Jizz Prize. <laughs> <laughs> Man, man. Uh, man. If I send a Quran to Venus, will it become habitable? <laughs> habitable? Probably. Yes, of course. The Quran's magic properties will do that. Uh, let's see. No comment there. The IDF is coming soon to free us from far four gangsters. Gangsters. People know what the gangsters about. You think, uh, you think we're doing gangsters? Coming soon to free us from far four gangsters, so I won't need to pay Jizya for Piglet anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, nice. Is it true? Yes. Is it true that the Black Death plague uh, was blamed on the Jews? It was at one point. Yeah. Um, it was. It was blamed on many different things. Um, never on the right. Never on the actual thing. Yeah. People didn't understand it. rats yeah. carry fleas and fleas carry yeah. plague. People didn't yeah. understand stuff back then. And so they it's thought always, this why? Why is this happening? Punishment from God. It is a, it is because of immorality. It is because of the witches. It is because of the Jews. It is because of this and that. They never figured it out. That's right. Let's see a little more. Who who is this guy? Who is this guy who? Sure, your painting is to some extent true, but is hugely incomplete. Nicholas, it is certainly true that plenty of fanatics and jihadis Nicholas are Muslim, Christen. but the people who are standing up to them, Malala. Uh, incredible Malala's Muhammad Ali uh, yes. Dadak in, in Iran, in prison for nine years for speaking up for Christians. Uh, a friend that I had in Pakistan who was shot this year, uh, Rashid Rahman, for defending people okay. accused of okay. apostasy. But, Nick, or how about but, more than a billion? What, what, what did this guy say that Sam and Bill wouldn't agree with? Hey, yes, you need to support the people who are standing against that stuff. Uh, I think that I think the difference is going to be, as far as all these guys are concerned, is uh, Bill and Sam understand that it has something to do with the ideology, and it's not just like random. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a friend that I watch, had in Pakistan uh, who was shot this, this year, uh, Rashid Rahman, for defending people okay. accused of okay. apostasy. But Nick, yeah, note, now, notice what he just pointed out. It's it's like he's saying, ah, look at this great guy that we should be supporting who stood against the people. You, you know, this guy's this guy's this guy's killed for trying to defend people from apostasy laws. OK, where do you get the apostasy laws? Islam. Why do you get the Why do you get the people who want to kill people who are opposing the apostasy law? Where you get Where's that coming from? Islam. How about the more than a billion those, people those who are aren't Muslims fanatical, too. who don't punch well, women, who just want to go to school? Okay, wait a second. Say, wait, just, wait a second. 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 Wait a the reason this clip blew up all those years ago is this is like so perfect. It's like, guys, <laughs> this is simple. We have these values that we say we believe in. Islam teaches the opposite. We need to quit defending Islam from criticism. We need to stop yeah. doing that. It's not making any sense. We're not helping anyone doing this. And then, oh, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist. That's, that's it. That's like the, that's what is going on <laughs> in the culture, right? It's, uh, it's, hey, common sense versus ball of emotion that you've been programmed to uh, be enraged about yeah the, the, these guys literally just said um there there are a lot of problems in the islamic culture in the islamic world we need to talk about it uh we can't just you know dismiss that as, as islamophobic uh because these things are concerns that we should be concerned with as liberals and then this guy's like what what how about one billion people are perfectly fine they're not radical shut up man what a baby what a baby. Uh, Joshua here says this Mojab calling out the champion fighter of the Jews slash IDF sounds similar to, I don't know, like Goliath calling out Israel's champion warrior. I would pay money to watch Mojab get humble. Yeah, that's, I don't know what he would, I don't, one, I don't know what he actually said. If he said, hey, I challenge you guys to come up with your fighter to fight me. That was stupid because you have actual, you've had in the IDF actual professional MMA fighters. And one of them called him out on it. And there is yeah. no way, Muhammad. I mean, e even if he's like, here's the thing. I don't think he's that, he's he's a narcissist, but I, I don't think he, I don't think he really thinks like, even though this guy's 50 years old, 
Uh, and even though I outweigh him by at least a hundred pounds and I'm almost a foot taller than him, like you could think every advantage he has to know he would get destroyed by, by that guy. And you just have to go like back to the early days of UFC and look at, look at what an actual expert in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu does to someone who who's even much bigger. It, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu tends to work pretty well against guys. And they, they even have, um, the Gracie Jiu Jitsu guys, they have a, a kind of rule of thumb because, you know, outweighing someone is relevant. Being a massively bigger guy does help. Being a much younger guy does help. And they have a kind of rule of thumb, which is something like for every every 10 years older you are, um, well, if, if someone is 10 years younger than you, then that's basically the equivalent of a belt level. And if someone, uh, for every certain number of pounds, like every 20 pounds or something, they, they factor that in as a, as a belt level. The point is, if this guy's an actual MMA fighter level guy, which he is, uh, and a third degree black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, it's, you can take all of Hijab's advantages and the guy's still going to crush him. He's just, he's just yeah. going to, it's, it's, there's, there's just a huge difference when you get to the, the realm of professional fighters professional MMA fighters from guys who run around running their mouths all the time. So yeah, yeah, he would, he would get humbled. He, I think he knows that. I don't think he's going to even his, with his level of narcissism, I don't think that he'll actually think he can win. And so he's going to back down. No question about it. Going to back down. And you can, we'll play this clip after he backs down. So since we called it. Uh, Surah 46, nine, Muhammad doesn't know where he's going. Versus Jesus on John eleven twenty five, he is the rection and the life. You see, David, I've been saying this, yeah. So um, that comment is about Surah forty six verse nine, where Muhammad is told to say that he doesn't know what Allah is going to do with him. And mm -hmm. if you look at the uh, the corresponding hadith, it's talking about salvation. Muhammad is saying, "I do not know what Allah is going to do with me," and what situation does that leave everyone in? And compare that with Jesus saying he's the resurrection and the life. Knows too much fact in the mid 1800s before modern Zionism and before many Muslim Palestinians migrated into the land, Jerusalem's majority population were Jews. I don't know that. Is that, is that, have you heard that? Um, so to my knowledge, they, yeah, to my knowledge, they were not the majority population, but they were a very significant uh, population and they were, um, it, it might be that it, it was fluctuating, but they but there was a very significant Jewish population that was like uh, so maybe because because you almost. did have because you did have Jews moving there, and then the Ottomans eventually start trying to bring in other people to offset the numbers. Uh -huh, uh -huh. What Possibly. maybe, and I don't know one way or another, but so you're saying there could have been a time when Jews had the majority yeah, there yeah. in the 1800s. Interesting. Yeah, we'd have to check it. Uh, yet who here says Jews were never kicked out of India. They have lived here for 1400 years with no conflicts and the Zoroastrians too. And yes, I choose the cow. <laughs> no, I think lots of Hindus would say they choose the cow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. David, yeah. here is some jizya for you. Keep, uh, keep up getting AP to convert Christianity. He already has apostate. So it's 75% of the piety cost. CK3 references, you also have a weak hook on AP for being a disbeliever. So these are all game references here. That's good. <laughs> That's what, see, when I hear you guys making your gamer references, now I know how other people fear, uh, uh, feel when they come on and they don't understand a bunch of references that were used. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Muslims genocided the Samaritans. Only around 100 left in the early 1900s. Israel secured their protection, saving them from complete annihilation. Interesting. A little more of uh, our hero, Ben Affleck, uh, destroying the Islamophobes. Two bad that. things, and you painting a br Wait, the whole group religion with no, that. No, no, let, let's get down to who has the right answer here. A billion people, you say. All these billion people don't hold any of billion these... Billion five or something. Like don't hold these pernicious beliefs? No, I wouldn't... Mm, well, he, I think he just said... So, Bill Maher said, okay, a billion people, because that's what uh, Ben Affleck's... Wrote. What about the billion people who don't do this stuff? And then Bill Maher said, okay, billion... And then Ben Affleck says, a billion five. So he thinks 1.5 billion, 
And matter of fact, yeah, I forgot about this. This is where Sam actually points out, they start going into some of the statistics and saying, hey, even though these guys aren't doing jihad and stuff like that, it is very common to have some very uh, illiberal views among the yeah. majorities, among majorities in various countries. They don't. That's oh, he's, just he's not gonna, true. He's going to mention it. He's going to mention ben, it. Yeah, it's no. just not ben. true. Can, can I, can I just express how I think it breaks down? The, 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 the idea, what are, you haven't even the, defined the, you're, you're trying to say that these few people, that's all the problem is, these few bad apples. And that has been the biggest problem when, uh, what was it, Obama, when he said, uh, you know, 99.9% of Muslims do not support you. And it's something that we had to point out to Rabbi Shmuley, which is you pointed out. It's this is the views that you're saying aren't part of us. They're a lot more common than you think. Yeah. And they're going to point this out. Here. The idea that someone should be killed if they leave mu- the That's Islamic. That's horrible. That should okay. wait, wait, that, that but is wait. You're saying the that the idea that Islam. someone should be killed if they leave the Islamic religion is just a few bad apples. The people who would actually uh-huh. believe and enact that you murder somebody if they yes. have Islam yes. is not the majority of Muslims at oh, all. Okay. But, uh, is it- One, it's definitely part of Islam. And two, you're about to get schooled on this, Ben. Yeah. Let, let me, let me you, break you, this you down for you. Okay, we have, it's, it's, as, you, that- as you say, we have 1.5, 1.6 billion mm-hmm. Muslims. Now, Second biggest religion in the world, a quarter. Well, Ben, let me, let me unpack this. I looked it up on Wikipedia right before the show. Second largest religion <laughs> in the world. See, don't I sound smart and I know what I'm talking about? You sound Let me unpack right. this for you. Please do. Um, we have a, 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 just up. imagine some concentric circles here. You have at the center, you have jihadists. These are people who wake up in the morning wanting to kill apostates, wanting to, to die trying. They believe in paradise. They, Horrible, they, they bad people. They believe in, in, that, yeah. in martyrdom. Outside of them, we have Islamists. These are, these are people who are just as convinced of martyrdom and paradise and, and mm-hmm. wanting to, to foist their religion on the rest of humanity, but they want to work within the system. They're not going to blow themselves up on a bus. They want to change governments. They want to use democracy against itself. That, it, that, those two circles arguably are 20% of the Muslim world. Okay. So concentric circles, 20%. This is not the what are you fringe basing of the that research on? A, a bunch of poll results that we can talk about. So uh, to, to give you one point of contact, 78% of British Muslims think that the Danish cartoonists should have been prosecuted. 78%. So I'm- Notice, so Ben pointed out, hey, you know, we've got free speech and uh, that, is a, that is a value that we share and so on. And so Sam points out, okay, 78% of British, British Muslims, we're not talking about Pakistan, 78% of British Muslims say, uh, hey, cartoons of Muhammad should be, uh, you, you should be locked up for that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So you've, so you've got a problem. This is, this is not a, a, you know, a fraction of a, of a, of 1%. It's most in the UK. How do you not see that as a problem? You just said concern- Nazi. Conservative when I roll this back to 20%. But outside of that circle, you have conservative Muslims who are, can, can, write, can honestly look at ISIS and say that, that does not represent us, we're, that we're horrified by that, but they hold views about human rights and about women, about homosexuals that are deeply troubling. So, so they, these are not Islamists, they're not jihadists, but they... But they Indeed, those they, views they, they are anathema to ours. And, but, and, and, but, but they also keep women and homosexuals immiserated in these cultures, and we have to empower the true reformers in the Muslim world yeah. to, to change it. And, oh, what, and, and but, lying about the, the, the link yeah, between okay. doctrine let, let and, talk and but, behavior but, is not yeah. going to do that. A lot but, of talk. It's just nuts that this would be considered controversial or that this would be something that enrages someone, right? It's, he's stating basic factual information. Uh, so, hey, we do have a problem with some very dangerous ideas. And then the response, ah, but most Muslims aren't running around slaughtering people in the name of Allah. So why are you putting them all together, lumping them together in with all these other people? And Sam said, no, it's actually once you look at some of their ideas, um, some of their ideas are, are majority, are majority in various populations. So don't act like it's this tiny minority or something like this. It's large populations who have some very, very illiberal views. We need to deal with that. And I, 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 how is this, how is this even controversial? How is not, how, how isn't everyone on this, on this panel here just in complete agreement here? That's the, that's the mystery. It, yeah. It's very difficult. Uh, Nanny here says there's a whole sequence about Muhammad's curses with links to AP's video. 
in my Mohammedo Islamo centric comic strip book, Muhammad and Friends, Haram Allah Haram Alama Ding Dong, volumes one through three. Do you guys want to read it? Yes. 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 Links to your videos. Have you gone through this? Maybe. I don't know. Remember, Turks used tunnels in the siege of Vienna. I love their tunnels. What do you call an atheist charity? A nonprofit. That's true. My university's socialist club had an event take, talking about how the Palestinian cause relates to the communist cause and global uh, intifadas. It's wild. Uh, yeah, it is. And uh, it's been pointed out. It's been pointed out. Hey, guys who are uh, cheering for the Palestinians, look at the look at the groups that are on your side. Start asking why they're on your side. Because they have very different ideas, and yet they will rally around certain ideas. Uh, choose the cow. Open your leather straps. You got a uh, nice homework there, Far Floor. It'd be a shame if I if it got buried in the tunnels you yourself dug. We got this, we got this ongoing uh, dispute now between uh <laughs> between Masab and uh it's never going to be settled. And far yeah. four. They're, they're waging <laughs> war right in the chat. Uh, no, too much said. I support the I support the right of return of Muslim Palestinians back back to Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Syria, Transjordan, Lebanon, Iraq, Bosnia. So yeah, yeah. What? Why do they want to return to that land that they were put in by the Ottomans? Al Spider-Man's leather strapus of Antioch. U.S. is occupying Alaska from the river to the snow. <laughs> Alaska froze off my toes. That's nice. Uh, Chloe says, if you love, if you love, love and hate, hate, come to Jesus, AP. Chloe uh, seems, uh, seems to care a lot about you, AP. But so do I. Wait, what is this? Your mod Sarah is about as useful as a broken uh, condom. She refuses to ban the troll Pomni who is spamming anti-Semitic bile. Who's that? I would say that uh, Sarah is actually very good. Yeah, and I, I tend to favor not banning people unless it's uh, unless there's a really good reason. Let me see who Somni is. Uh, Pomni. Pomni. Let me see what anyone else think Ben is right. Ben is right. Uh, ben is representing Pomni. Um, Pomni reminds me when I was 11. I don't see any stuff because I'm only going back for a little bit, but I'm going to take your word for it. Wait, guys, uh, let me ask. Has Pomni been spouting anti-Semitic nonsense, as has been claimed? Tell me if that is correct. Because I don't see any, but I can I can only go back. I don't have all the comments on there. I only have like the look the recent comments. He's saying Ben is right. He's saying Ben is right, but ben, saying Ben is right as stupid as uh, Ben Affleck is in what he's saying would not be a bannable offense. People are saying Sarah is the best mod. People are saying Sarah is awesome. That's what I'm saying. I don't he's saying Sarah is uh, Sarah's got it all wrong. That calls into question. Oh, Ara says ban him. People are saying yes. All right, I'm gonna ban him. Goodbye, Pomni. Get another channel, come back and spout Goodbye. your anti Semitic bile again. Goodbye. I'll ban your new channel in your face. Goodbye. Uh, let's see. Oops. Super chats. All right. Let's so, see. uh, you see, right, let's let's see. This. The great divide. Um, the great divide is not between Islam and the rest. It's right. rather between the fundamentalists right. and the moderates in each faith. Okay, but we're misled to think that the fundamentalists are the fringe. Okay. We have jihad jihadists. No, that Gosh, notice how he just, he nails it, right? We're let. So, Hey, yes, you have, you have moderates and you have fundamentalists. And the guy says, ah, you've got that in everywhere, man. You've got that in every religion. Yeah, and ben, yeah, we're misled to believe 
that the fundamentalists are some sort of extreme fringe in Islam. And yeah, not. but that's just something you're saying, man. Like, dude, man. Yeah. So, good, good points. Good, Bye. good points. Good points being made here. Thomas and point. conservatives. Well, and by the so way, this is hundreds of millions just of people. Just that say, you're saying that the that the, the the strongest voices are coming from those who are jihadists and extremists. And that, conservative, that represents yes. a bigger piece yes. of the pie than yeah. we often the, think is true. Yeah, <laughs> notice, my, my goodness, this guy got it. Like I don't, I don't know what it is about uh, Ben Affleck being enraged about something, but somehow like a mental block goes up and we cannot understand a simple point. This guy at least understood the simple point. Hey, you're saying that this is not an extreme fringe, that it's actually a lot more common. Yes, simple point. And uh, the, the only follow up point is, hey, does this stuff go back to what Muhammad actually command? Does Is it actually part of the ideology or is it just, you know, s some weird, some weird offshoot or something like that? Question okay, so them. having said that, and, and if you it, even if that is true statistically or otherwise, the key thing to recognize that I don't think is part of the argument, but I think should be, is that there are voices that are oftentimes uh, raised uh, in opposition to these jihadists yes. and to these extreme acts. Yes. But guess what? They don't get covered. They don't get exposed, and they're not given the same well, level they don't, of uh, one the same level of platform. Uh yeah, no, that was a that was a fail here. Yeah. The, one, that's totally ridiculous, right? Anytime someone, uh, oh, Islam's a religion of peace and tolerance, they, they put them all over the news for years after every, yeah, after yeah. every terrorist attack, after 9-11, after the 7-7 bombings, after every terrorist attack, they would parade all of that. Oh, we don't support that. We don't support that. We don't support that. You the know other, what? Sometimes I feel this whole thing. Um, you know how sometimes certain people say, um, you know, uh, you guys, you shouldn't be talking about this. You know, you are no place to talk about this because of your background, culture, skin color, and, and all of that. I, I usually find those things ridiculous. But when I see conversations like these, I, as somebody who experienced Muslim culture on different levels deeply, um, and who listens to this stuff, to these guys like sitting there and just, uh, you know, whitewashing and denying some very basic things that are totally uh, correct about the Muslim world, such as that um, hating non-Muslims, believing in violence and violent punishments and all of that are very normal, very common things. These are things very common among the regular Muslim. You don't have to go to the jihadists or the Islamists and all of that. But seeing these people, uh, you know, give these speeches makes me think, you know, please shut up, guys. Shut up, guys. Let, yeah, let, let those people talk who actually know. Stop stop trying to be these uh, these saviors who are like, oh, no, 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 no. We shouldn't talk like that about the, the Muslims. We should treat them with these baby gloves. The Muslims, right. they're all very nice people. Then let's not talk about the bad things uh, you know, regarding Muslims. No, 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 we shan't do that. We have to protect them. This is just so stupid. It's a, yeah, it's really, really, really pathetic. Um, Phoenix says, sorry, AP misunderstood. The taquilla I meant, so this is from earlier, was meant at the Muslim <laughs> spread, not D. Wood and Gang. Lil, keep up the good work, guys. Yeah, we know we're not doing taquilla. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. that's usually what I, how I joke. The cow he chose. Uh-oh. We got some Hebrew there. What does it say, AP? I see 1.6 there. I see 1.6 there. Just kidding. I can't do that. I, <laughs> I was like, I was, I was about to be impressed there. <laughs> yeah. I had a, I had a Mexican friend named Alvarez in prison and we'd be out on the weight pile and I would be pretending to speak Spanish, <laughs> but he would respond in Spanish, even though I'm just babbling and he knew I was bad. <laughs> I'd just be sitting there. I'd just be sitting there. We're sitting on the weight pile and stuff like this. And I'd go, Hey, Alvarez. And he would start, he would, he would talk back, but he would be saying stuff. And like, like afterwards guys were coming up. Wow, David, I didn't know you knew Spanish like that, man. <laughs> man. That's AP. That's like AP uh, doing his, his Hebrew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's the need to virtual sig to virtue signal and hate for Christ. Yeah. That'd be, 
Uh, hey, I know this is off topic, but I'm a corrections officer, and I was hoping that David, given his perspective, might have some advice on how to be a good Christian one without being unnecessarily cruel or unjust. Yeah, it, no, it that does play a role. There were there were cool Christian correctional officers uh, when I was uh, when I was locked up. So yeah, and I would uh, I say this all the time, but I would say get. Um, Get a copy of Tactics by Greg Kokel and check that out. That would be very helpful in all kinds of situations, but that would be very useful in a prison context as well. And it's just a good place. Lots of guys who you grow up and you're constantly doing things. And uh, some people, has, you know, they're, they're, they're drug dealers and it's a very fast paced life. And all of a sudden they get in a cell and everything slows down and they can actually think about, you know, their their lives and and where their positions have led them and so on. And it's actually good, a good time for someone to be there and, uh, and try to help them out. Uh, let's see. Immortal being your mods refuse to take down blatant anti-Semitism and misinformation. I get you want free speech, but goes too far when they call for death of Jews. Yeah. Ban someone for calling for the death of Jews. What's, what's so hard about that? Stop flipping out. Immortal. Um, I banned the guy. Ben Affleck had too much Ziagra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, wait a minute. Mrs. Apostate. Is your wife a mod? Uh, is she? Is she? Did you make her a mod? I don't know. Uh, okay, Mrs. Apostate is a mod now. If she wasn't already, I put make her mod. Fantastic. I might need to find some more, uh, some additional. Yeah, if someone if someone's going after Sarah, I'm thinking maybe Sarah is the only mod who's there. When <laughs> I should have more mods. Um, uh, but yeah, no, people understand that. I mean, normally I would prefer banning someone, so it would be my call uh, before I ban somebody. But yes, if someone is uh, if someone is calling for the the death of Jews or something like that, then yeah, that would be a that would be a bannable offense. And you might want to give a warning first and tell the person to shut up and don't ever say it again. Um, but use your own judgment. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mo talking about uh, <laughs> Ben Affleck's little rant at the beginning. Did he say we are endowed by our forefathers? Yes, he was clearly he was trying to uh, he was trying to quote the uh, Declaration of Independence and did about a good a good a job as a. Uh, who was it? Was it was it was it Biden? I'm trying to think who botched that way back in the day. It was, uh, Joe Biden did a thing. Yeah, that's what I mean, Biden. Uh, to to be fair, I'm kind of like that. I can have something that I, if I'm just sitting by myself, I've got totally memorized. And if I am um, trying to spit it one day and I haven't cite, I haven't quoted it before with a bunch of people around. Yeah, sometimes you get a little jumbled up. But yeah, so the, the the clue there, Ben, would be stop trying to sound smart and quote stuff if you can't actually spit it as it has to be spit. Uh, this, club, this clip led Dave Rubin to leaving one of the first uh, to be suddenly be labeled conservative despite being uh, married to a man. Oh, you're saying that this, that this clip was what set, sort of set Dave Rubin off and saying, whoa, we got a problem here? I think I remember Dave Rubin mentioned that, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, David and Riven, the Beavis and Butthead of apologetics. <laughs> Pair character. Let's see. All right, let's watch a little more of this. Um, that we see the jihadist. One reason they don't get exposed is because they're afraid to speak out. Because and that's it's the only. Oh. It's the because it's the that's only it. religion that acts like the mafia that will fucking kill you that, if you say the wrong true. thing, I mean, draw the wrong picture, or write the wrong book. So you do yeah. have that's exactly <laughs> what I would have wanted to point out. So this guy points out, ah, but there are all these voices that are marginalized, and they're calling for change, and, and they don't get enough exposure. And Penn points, yeah, because they'll kill you over that. That's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> you can't, what happened? I mean, matter of fact, the guy pointed it out. He's like, oh, I had my friend in, in Pakistan who's shot because he's advocate. Yeah, you can't even speak out against it because they'll kill you. Do you not? That's part of the problem. That's part of the problem. You don't say, oh, there's this guy and he he got killed for speaking out against the apostasy laws. So you see, there are all these voices. Like, why did he get killed? Why can't he speak out? Why can't he quit? Do you not realize there's a problem there? 
Well, it's nature killed him. It was nature. It was the world that killed him. That's what actually happened. Uh, yeah, here, uh, Ben's uh, Declaration of Independence goes out of his way to replace the creator with forefathers. Yet, did he say endowed by forefathers <laughs> and not endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights? That's what I heard, too. Huh? <laughs> if he said endowed by their forefathers, then he's a moron. I want to go back and check it out now. <laughs> But they're endowed by their forefathers. <laughs> uh, Joshua here. Uh, Joshua says, uh, Bill Maher, humans are not good people. I wish there was a worldview that said, yes, people are bad and need a savior. Also, when people are the highest authority, we make bad decisions. What's higher? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, the question is how he's going to get out of that, that little uh, predicament that he's buried himself in. I don't agree with AP. Does that make me an atheophobe? Yes. It is pretty it is pretty slimy and I hope that we're eventually going to get past this where a- anytime you have this you disagree with somebody they, they immediately go to racism if that's a possibility. I just saw this with that there's this billionaire. There's this billionaire I guess where? stock guy or whatever who he was complaining about the uh the college presidents. And so he's on Twitter and complaining that they, he said they all, all these presidents need to be fired, right? So notice there are three college presidents. He says these college presidents need to be fired. And then the article that gets written about him is because Claudine Gay is black, he wants her ousted. And he's like, wait, the other two are white. I said that. How are you? I saw that too. Yeah. It was That's ridiculous. like embarrassingly terrible, guys. Like just, just a day before, like, uh, or, the the other one was re, was forced to resign, but you are writing about the the black one and saying it's because of racism. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, that's stupid. Now notice there could be an actual racist who doesn't want a black woman uh, being the president of Harvard. You could have someone who doesn't want her being in that position because the person is an actual racist. But when you just that's your go to message in a situation where it doesn't make any sense because this guy's saying all these. Uh, even these white, even these white people, they need to be fired too. Because of what? Because of their race? No, because of the horrible things they said. Uh, let's see. I agree with AP. Pre-Islamic paganism has nothing to do with Hinduism. It was an independent religion in its own right. It thrives as Islam, though. Alhamdulillah. That's very beautifully said. See? Because it agrees with me. Uh, you will be saved from being put, put to death. Uh, if you haven't yet, will you react to some of the anti-Israel people that have been on Timcast? Uh, I haven't, I haven't been watching, I haven't watched Timcast in a while, so I don't know, I don't know who's been on there. I have recently been invited to Tim Pool's. Uh, oh, you should go on there, man. Other show, not not to Timcast, but he has a, he has a different different show that is something about conflicting ideas. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's, it's still being arranged. But I would do that. I would yeah. go there. Yeah, you should totally go on there. Uh, did either of you catch the post saying some leaky water tank was from Zionists stabbing it? Or the Egyptian bulldozer video passed off as IDF? No. I oh, yeah, I saw, I saw that. I saw that. A, a, a video was posted, which was actually from, uh, from 2013, Egypt. And it was posted online on Twitter as, uh, look, Israel is, uh, you know, um, driving a bulldozer over a bunch of Palestinian bodies and something like that. It's it's an old video from Ooh. Egypt. Nice, powerful. Uh, stuff. Ben can't say anything bad or good about slavery. He doesn't have the qualifications. Yeah, notice if you actually took that seriously, that oh, you can't condemn Islam's apostasy laws or wife beating or something like that. You can't condemn that unless. You're a world-renowned scholar on that. It's like, okay, what, do you want to? Do you really want to live like? You can't say anything is wrong. You can't say uh, you know, uh, getting hooked on meth is wrong unless you are a, a, a doctor, a medical doctor, a medical doctor. You I'm, a medi- I'm a medical doctor. Medical doctor. Uh, yeah, it's really weird stuff. What is this, David? How much can you bench? I don't know. I've always uh, I've always had problems benching because I had a I've had a, an elbow injury since I was little. Uh, Making excuses, messed excuses. Up. And I've had shoulder injury. I could probably get you like being out of shape. I could probably get you two ten or something like that. So 
Make so it two, two, two ten would be good for a lot of people. For someone my size, that would be pretty, uh, pretty light. Uh, especially, Excuse especially me? like, like I, I have some like massively strong people in my family. I don't. I, I mentioned before my grandfather. He set a state record for over sixty bench press. It's probably bench press because this was back in the day. But he was. He was in his 60s and he was still benching 360, which, uh, you know, that's a that's pretty good for an old guy. You see. Uh, let's see, AP, D. Wood, do you think Muslims yeah. will ever change and maybe make their countries more secular? I think even good Muslims are scared to do anything because of fear of being attacked by extremists. Um, yes, I do believe that you're going to see some changes in Muslim countries. Um, mainly just because if you get enough, if you get enough apostates, whatever they're going to, whether they're becoming atheists, whether they're becoming Christians, if you get enough and then you get enough external pressure and so on, yeah, you can have, then you can have governments actually making changes and saying, okay, we can't have the Sharia doesn't work anymore. Uh, you have any view on that AP? Um, I do think so. Yes, uh, Muslims will have a change and may countries more secular. I, I I think they are already changing. Yeah, um, yeah, they they, 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 have, they have been they have been for a long world. time. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, they have been changing for a long time. You basically have you basically have a couple possible reactions. You have uh, the reason the reason things suck in our countries is because we haven't been devout enough. We haven't been devout enough. And if we were more devout, then Allah would bless us to uh, prosper and so on. So that's the reaction of you know places like Afghanistan and so on. And then you have, hey, the reason the reason that we uh, uh, the reason that things aren't working well is we haven't modernized. And you can have uh, you can have uh, efforts to modernize, and so, which, you, by the way, you had in Afghanistan. You had that in Afghanistan. You had that in Iran back in the 20th century. You look at you can look at pictures from the 1960s in Afghanistan and Iran and so on. It, lo it looked like the West. They were trying to modernize. But there was the other possible reaction, which is maybe it's because we haven't been devout enough. That's why Allah is not blessing us. So you have the places like Afghanistan who are going to go more radical and try it. You have Iran, which they tried it with the Iranian revolution. You see how that's working. But it looks like those those places are going to crumble. Those places are going to crumble. And so you Inshallah. could, I think you will get the, the opposite. Okay, we just need to modernize. Yeah. David, you can have all the black powder arms you want. Yeah, there are certain things. You can even have a, they even have like really powerful, like CO2 powered stuff that will actually just knock some, just completely knock someone over. They have high power projectiles that I could, yeah, get. But uh, I don't know. I'm uh, pretty happy with these here. Matter of fact, I'll tell you, if it, if it, if it's, if it's three or four on one and they come with like knives and not with guns, I'm a win. I'm gonna win that. I'm gonna win that with these. Try right, roll. Try it. If you don't believe it. And bring your GoPros guys. Bring your GoPros jihadis. Cause yeah. you're going to get embarrassed. And I want that footage. Um, <laughs> You need to stop eating Quran pages. Think about all the STDs Muhammad scientifically miraculously encoded on those pages. Yeah, probably. Uh, yep. <laughs> Gross stuff. Yeah. Have you heard about the Antichrist being a Muslim? Yeah, been hearing about that for a long time. And there are people who actually study this stuff who make those make those arguments. In other words, there are people who study end times a lot and uh, and make that claim. Funny how you guys got a million good ideas every live, but you never do anything except those lives. That's right. We do. We'll sit, we'll, we'll, we'll sit here and, hey, that would be a good idea for a video. Yeah, that would be a good idea for a video. No, this would be a good idea for a video. And then, uh, yeah. Oh, these are, these are comments from earlier when we're talking about guns. Many great CO2 self, yeah. Yeah, that's what I just mentioned. Gun options, yeah. Yeah, I've seen them. You can actually get pistols that shoot like... Uh, pretty high power stuff that will apparently just knock a person over and can even get ones that are loaded with uh like tear gas and stuff like that so after it knocks them over it's uh makes them cry but again i can do that with my fists there once was a man named muhammad his hygiene was closer to a pig his semen <laughs> stained down gave an aisha a frown but he didn't care what the heck gave more what the what's this pervert talking about Hey guys, I, I know some of you come over from AP's channel, but uh, <laughs> of course that's that's the problem. 
Chloe says, uh, off topic, AP, have you used rem Rememtron plugin for GPT-4? It gives GPT a memory between conversations. Now GPT remembers everything we have talked about. Clever. Oh, really? I, that's actually, uh, that's very useful. I, um, I have been thinking it would be very nice if it could actually remember who I am and what I just said. Uh, I didn't try that. I will, I will check it out. It's very nice. Uh, AP D Wood, what do you think of Deerporn, Michigan? <laughs> it's my home away from home. It is slowly becoming jihad capital of U.S. You guys should certainly not go there. Uh, not sage. I mean, you think you mean safe anymore? I want to go there right now. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't know if you've been following. Like, I don't know what what you're familiar with, Sid. But yeah, I got locked up there with my friend Nabil, um, in like 2009 or something like that, 2009, 2010. But Nabil's sitting there, standing there, answering questions of Muslims who gathered around, and police come and lock us up. They toss us in jail. And the guy didn't tell me this, but he told Nabil and he told our other friend Paul, the guy who was taking our mug shots, right? So he's taking our mug shots. I don't talk. To, I didn't. I didn't talk to him. But Nabil and our friend Paul talked to the guy separately. They both said he said the same thing, and it got brought up in the lawsuit later, and the guy denied it. Um, but he said, as he's taking the mug, mug shots, he's talking to Nabil, and later on he's talking to Paul. But the guy's taking the mug shots, the officer's taking the mug shots. He starts, uh, he's talking to Nabil and Paul, and hey, why are you guys doing this? Blah, 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 blah. And they're like, what are you talking about, man? You, we can't even, we're not allowed to talk. We're not allowed to, we're not allowed to talk about Jesus without you guys throwing us in jail. They said the guy said, uh, you don't have to tell me how things, how messed up things are here. He said, I've gone into houses where a girl has been beheaded by her parents and it's never in the news and no one ever knows about it. Guy said he's been to homes where girls have been beheaded by their families and no one ever finds out about it. So this, this got, this got brought up, this got brought up and he denied it. So I never said that. I was like, wait a minute. You told two guys that they both told me that I trust them, but I understand why, why you, the, you would later deny it. It's creepy stuff. So yeah, pretty, pretty messed up. Pretty bad. From the river to the sea, Judea must be free. All right, let's go and wrap that's, up. That's, you do have, but this, there's, there's a reason why Ayan Hirsi Ali needs bodyguards 24-7. Yeah. You do have that element of fear as well, but you also have other braver souls out there who do speak out and who like-, like and who are the, risking their lives risking to those, do that. Like the, yeah. like the, uh, the Muslim uh, clerics yeah. and uh, others in, from Australia to, to Europe to the United States just recently publicly put their names on paper declare declaring their opposition to what ISIS and, and oh yeah, 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 yeah so there yeah, are those yeah, voices know, but where know, was the coverage know. where was where was that story to sort well, of create a different okay, picture well, what is your solution what, what is your ask no, no, the, the, let, let's talk about all let's talk about those few people who speak out against it let, let's yeah. let's not focus on the bad that yeah. actually dominates the Islamic world let's just talk about those who, who who speak out against that yeah how about that how about that let's be yeah, nice and then, and then Ben here Ben uh -huh. starts babbling what's your solution so what's your solution? What's your solution? And it's like, I mean, step one would be acknowledging that there's a, a problem here, Ben. Yeah. It's kind, it's kind of foundational. One, two, two, stop defending it. Stop calling everyone racist for pointing out the problems in the Muslim world. Just stop all that nonsense. That's kind of stop step it, one. Racist. It's kind yeah. of step one. And by the way, AP, you are wrong. Jews were a majority of Jerusalem population since before Zionism. In your face. We'd have to see some statistics out. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I believe from it. from South India, I V will it. be killed or jailed if we speak against uh, Islam or Muhammad. It happens regularly. Love you, D Wood and AP. Really, in South India, the, 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 there there are certain regions where that's more dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're familiar with with Northern India. We're saying in, even in South India, there's there's some problem areas, mm -hmm. and India's like that with uh, with Christians. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll hear, I'll hear because. You will have an area where things are bad for Christians in India, and you'll have other areas where Christians are going, what are you talking about? We don't have any problems here. So, yeah, things can change uh, change a lot based on region. Is it wrong to ask non-believers to try the lesser key? Yeah, of India, has a, India has a problem. This is why it's like um, it's it's always a problem when, when you talk about India and how uh, Muslims act there and how safe it is to, to discuss Islam and all of that stuff. But India also has a 
India has been consistently listed as one of the least safe countries for certain Christian groups, Christian people. Yeah, they're to, always that, pretty that, high. That they're always of, pretty high up there. And when I and I brought that up to Christians in India, and I've just got totally different reactions. I, I've had I've had I've had uh, I've had Christians in India say, "David, why are you why are you complaining so much about uh, Islam when we're persecuted here?" Uh, and I've had other I've had other Christians in India saying, what are you talking about? I've never once had a problem in my entire life with uh, with anyone persecuting me here in India. So, yeah, it, it, things do seem to vary uh, by region. Uh, what is this? Is it wrong to ask non-believers to try the lesser key of Solomon to summon demons to get possessed to make them aware of the spirit world? Yeah, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want people to get possessed to make them aware of the spirit world. But, yeah, I'm not familiar with I that. I would. Lesser key of Solomon. I would. Yeah, I would. All right, everyone, we're going to pray for AP to get demon-possessed so that he recognizes there's a spirit world. Inshallah. No, we're not really going to do that. Do not take it. Learn what sarcasm is. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know about that. Justin says, specific, I'm thinking of uh, Scott Horton, Tim Cass. So have you heard of Scott Horton, AP? I think this is talking about the people. Uh, don't know. That he was Scott Horton. saying you'd like us to react to. I don't know. I don't even know what it is. Well, Tim Cass? Nope. Uh, Sid, Dave, what do you think of Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, and some African Americans converting to Islam? And it is considered trendy. Are they not aware of what Arab Muslims did to Black people in trans-Saharan trade? No, no. I've talked about that a bunch of times in the past. But I mean, if you go back to like the 1960s when it was becoming popular to convert to Islam, the African American community. I mean, think about this. Bukhari hadn't even been pub wasn't available in English. Sahih Muslim wasn't available in English, and this allowed. Muslim preachers to to make up anything they wanted about Islam to win converts because no one was in a position to correct them and show them sources and so on. Um, yeah, I was once talking to I was once talking to uh, uh, a woman after this was outside of a little outside of Baltimore, but I was speaking at a church there for a conference, and a woman came up to me afterwards and said, uh, "said Hey, you know, I was a Christian. My my husband was a." My husband was a Muslim whose parents converted back in the back in the sixties, and she goes, uh, she goes, I was using your stuff and Nabil's stuff, and and he 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 left Islam and he's a Christian now. And then he comes up to me, but he still he still had he, he still looked like a, a Muslim. Um, so he had converted recently, and this guy walks up to me and he says, he goes, hey man, he goes, uh, he goes, hey thanks. He goes, <laughs> this is funny. He said once he found out that the reasons his parents converted to Islam were all bogus, that, oh, Islam liberates liberates the slaves and, and, and so on. Uh, he said he wanted to tell his brother, because he and his brother had been raised to believe that Islam is this great solution to, uh, to all these problems and so on. And he said, uh, he said once he be left Islam and became a Christian, he said, I have to tell my brother. And his wife said, whatever you do, don't send him any David Wood videos. He's just going to enrage him at this point. And he, <laughs> said, he said, no, I have to. And he said, I sent him your video, Muhammad, the white prophet with black slaves. <laughs> he says, I sent him that. And he said his brother called him that night and said, I just left Islam. Oh, and wow. uh, that's, a that's a cool situation where... If your entire confidence in Islam is based on a lie and that lie gets exposed, you can see normally it takes a long time for someone to leave Islam. But there are some there are some people who their entire confidence is based on like one thing. It could, it could be it could be a similar situation if someone's entire confidence in Islam were based on like the the perfect preservation of the Quran. You just show that it's nonsense. And it's like, well, that was the only reason to, to be a Muslim and now it's gone. But uh, yeah, it's uh, ignorance is what. Ignorance of Islam is what Muslim preachers will use to spread Islam. They'll they'll go wh whatever you whatever you value. If you do not know about Islam, they will say Islam is what gives you that, and it's total nonsense. And so the solution is to get people to know some basic information about Islam. Uh, I'm giddy for you to to enjoy my cartoons, which contain about seventy links to both of your videos and many others. How do I get you both a link to the ebook? Already tried emailing. Do it again. I'll check it out. Yeah, do it again. And Chloe here says we should be wrapping this up. We're going on. I don't know if we can finish getting through. Everything. Why is Chloe saying we should be wrapping this up? I said that. 
you guys, especially AP, need to watch The Gospel of John, the Christopher Plummer movie on YouTube. It's word for word. I love uh, Jesus Cleansing the Temple. Very well done. Uh, Christopher Plummer. I know there's the Gospel of John movie. I don't know. Is that Christopher Plummer? Is that the guy? I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'd have to see that. Uh, Sam and Bill's number one mistake, not quoting Islamic text. That is an issue, right? That, it, yeah. It, notice. So uh, so they're giving statistics to refute the claim that this is some weird fringe. But yes, would have been very helpful to just say, hey, Muhammad said, if anyone leaves his Islamic religion, kill him. Uh, do you have do you have a problem with that? Muhammad says right here that if your wife gets out of line, you could beat her into submission. Do you have a problem with that? That would have been helpful. Uh, J-Lo left him because she gets it. She's from the block. <laughs> Wait, aren't they back together now? I thought they got back together or something. My bun jihad is resisting the urge to do the Farfour dance 20 times a day. I do it all the time. The Farfour dance do, now? Yeah, I've seen you yeah, do it. I, I do it several times a day. Like, Yeah, you, you, have to, you only have to do it when someone you love is dying. That's when you do the Farfour yeah, dance. Yeah. I, I, always, I always do it when somebody dies. And from Mrs. Apostate, we have the Israeli-Palestinian conflict yeah. reminds me of what Muhammad said, Jesus said, first take the leather strap out of your own anus, and then you'll see clearly to take the leather strap out of your neighbor's anus. Yeah, I, I've pointed that out on uh, on Twitter, uh, some of the <laughs> interesting quotes you get. <laughs> you pointed out the difference between, between what Jesus would say and what Muhammad would say, right? Oh, now we got the mod, the mod comments. My name is Sean said, uh, put me a mod. I, how, how do I know? I don't trust lots of people. Like I, like, I feel like if I, if I have like 20 moderators and I'm just going to start banning everyone, I'm not going to know who's doing it or something. Does it tell you who banned who? No, I don't make, make a far four, a mod, you weakling. I will be better than Sarah. <laughs> Or for never watch that Batman movie where Ben plays the character shows you how good an actor he is. Uh, God bless your work, uh, David Wood and a. You know what's funny? I've I've never seen a any Batman movie. What? I haven't watched a single one of them. You don't? You never saw the the Dark Knight or any of that? No, nope. never. Off topic. I got the voice of Jesus from the Chosen using AI to speak Jesus quotes from the NAS Bible. So from the chosen, still haven't seen that from the NASB, but I got to I got to figure out how to use this. Uh, I've never done anything with the chat stuff, the AI stuff. I got to figure that stuff out. Why is why is anyone taking advice from an actor? Their actors are trained to lie. Yeah, that is a problem. Uh, I've been yeah. watching you both for two years now. Great work, AP. You've come a long way. Your knowledge on so many subjects is truly formidable. Yes, that's true. How do you, how do you know so much stuff? Let's I don't see. know. My first super born... chat ever. My first super chat ever. I'm a professional illustrator with a wicked knack for editorial and tons of Muhammad ideas, but uh, don't dare out for fear of my family. Well, you don't need to publish your name and stuff. Uh, he chose. He chose Mr. L. Moo. That's the cow. He the cow he chose. Uh, yeah. Moo. <laughs> when the age of apostasy strikes Islam. When the age of apostasy strikes Islam, will all the current top Dawah guys be marked for failing and causing the downfall? I think they will. In other words, I, yeah, I think they're doing more damage. I think they're destroying it from within. It's just a question of are any of them doing so deliberately or are they all just really this dumb? Fastest growing yes. religion, fastest growing religion in Iran. I think it is Christianity. I would love to put my leather straps on either of you being on <laughs> Tim whatever channel. Oh, I mean, apparently AP, AP is uh, invited. So yeah, that would be awesome. I will be watching. You know what? We'll be watching. I'll be watching. Did, did you guys see the, okay, so cool. We're through the super chats here. Did you guys see the Harvard Harris poll results? I saw it. Yeah. Um, what is that? What's I, that talking I, about? I was reading them earlier. Well, they're first off, um, the first quarter or so is about general political stuff, but then uh, most of it when it gets to the point is about uh, the Israel Hamas war and thoughts on anti-Semitism and all of that. And they chose um, American individuals randomly 
and weighted them to get a proper picture of the average American opinion. And <clears throat> it looks like the polls, the, the, the results are pretty good overall in general, such as that um, the majority of Americans still think, uh, still say October 7 is a terrorist, it was a terrorist attack. Hamas is a terrorist organization. Uh, we support Israel's right to defend itself and so on. But the thing is, um, what is puzzling what is shocking, which is why some uh, news sites reported on it, is that there is one final question. I don't know if it's the last question or uh, second to last, but um, th there is a question like, uh, what do you think is the solution to the uh, Israel-Hamas war or the Israel-Palestine conflict? And then there are three choices. One of them is... Uh, to have two states, Palestine and Israel, side by side. The other is that uh, the Arab nations should just absorb the Palestinian territories. And then there's the other option, the third option is end Israel and give it all back to Hamas and Palestine. And that was chosen by 51% of respondents. Gosh. Which doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's because, freaking nuts. Uh, which doesn't, okay, wait, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. That was chosen by 51% of respondents between the ages of 18 and, and 24. Okay, that, that, that's what was what was done. So it was, again, the young population that is stupid. Stupid, uh, shocker. They, they chose it, 51%. But the thing is, it doesn't really, that, that response doesn't make sense when you look at the rest of the survey because overall they seem to be quite reasonable. And yeah, I'd have to check I, that I, out. I that, does seem, that does seem at odds with the rest of the stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it also says give back to Hamas and Palestine, which is just, which is a stupid suggestion because there is no giving back. <laughs> it was never part of that. I can guess the answer here, but AP, as an atheist, do you believe in demons? I am a demon. No, uh, I don't. I don't. Could have guessed that. Yeah, I mean, in theory, you could be an atheist who rejects the existence of God and still believe in demons, but they, there's, those, they yeah. normally, those beliefs normally go out together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. When your mod, uh, when you mod someone and they do something, it tells you what the mod does. What? Oh, that's okay. cool. Uh, Chloe here says it's not GPT. I'm oh, talking about the uh, the AI voice. It's not GPT. It's AI voice copy or Jesus from Chosen. Oh, yeah. And finally, Carlo here says, AP, have you seen the video where Ali Dawa tells Israel advocacy he doesn't belong in Britain and go back to, and to go back to Israel? Did he say that to someone? Did he say, hey, go? did he tell the guy to go back to Israel? <laughs> that would be funny. Did he actually say that? that that's because that's like a very big endorsement for Zionism from Ali Dawa. <laughs> yeah. OK, so I need a place I can go back to. Thank you very much, Ali Dawa. That would be worthy of uh, worthy of a response. That would be funny. Yeah, we'll have to that's, check that that's, out. That sounds like something Aldawa would say because he's stupid. He doesn't. He can't think through the things that he actually says. Yeah. And here, uh, find Chloe says the chosen diverts a bit from Jesus' true words. That's why I took the actor's voice and put it to AI so he can read Jesus' actual words from the NASB. Yeah. Again, I still haven't seen the chosen. We're planning on watching it uh, someday. Maybe we'll post a reaction video or something to that. Um, I posted two. I, I watched two seasons of it. I uh, I haven't watched a third yet, but I think it's very good as yep. a as a non-Christian, I have to say. Um, yeah. It would be nice to see your reaction to that, actually. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I, I saw too, too many, too many, too many crap Christian movies over the years. Maybe not want to watch uh, the, some of the Christian stuff that comes out. I, I would uh, never sit down and watch and, uh, and watch a regular mainstream Christian movie. Okay, but that yes, that do. show you'll is do. Uh, you'll, you'll do it, you'll do it. That, but that that show is uh, it, it's it's very good. It's outstanding. It's like it's not like regular religious stuff. You know, it's, right. it's very well, well done. Uh, I will check it out at some point, probably binge watch it with a Muslim and an atheist and then do a reaction video. That'd be cool. Okay. All right. We've been going almost four hours here. Really? Yes. We That's somehow creepy. managed to get through all the super chats. I was thinking, ah, we should just cut these off. But yep, we, uh, I don't think we need to finish up this video. It's just uh, Ben Affleck whining a bit, trying to think if they said anything else that's that's uh, relevant. Uh, I don't think there is. So um, I think we will. What is this? Please have a stream with Myth Vision. We did a couple of years ago. We we were on after the uh, the Bart Ehrman Mike Lacona debate. 
Myth Vision. Yeah, if Myth Vision comes up with a cool topic for us to discuss, yeah, we can have a uh, we can have a discussion about that. Myth Vision is good. Yeah. Yes. He's also he's also very handsome, so we'll get lots more ladies watching. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, interesting yeah. all right everyone well we've uh we've been through it take away there are some people who actually have some common sense some people have some common sense on all sides and so even even the liberals have their bill maher occasionally you just you sit back and wonder what in the name of common sense. We're talking about hey demons i mean ap there comes a point where you have to start wondering. This is so easy to understand that people not getting it, it's got to be demonic something. There's got to be some demonic influence yeah. here going yeah. on because it's just pretty, pretty messed up. Uh, <laughs> Far Force says distraction plus mod me weakling. Yeah, I'm going to make a guy who, <laughs> who, la who dances when his grandfather's dying. I'm going to make him a moderator. Yeah, good <laughs> idea. All right, everyone. So we've heard from everyone and... Uh, any final thoughts, AP? Well, I would say um, that there is there is one thing that people often, uh, you know, say or ask in response to all of the stuff that is happening in the world, and that is like, so what is your solution? And my solution is simple: stay away from Islam. Yeah, and I think we can sum up everything that's happened, everything we've discussed, with a song. Hey. Follow no child molester, sex offender, private pretender. Ain't gonna follow no child molester. Islam's not for me. Ben. Islam's not for me. Ben Affleck. Islam's not for me. Woohoo! So stop defending it, Ben.